glorious weather in the San Francisco Bay Area football weather and the crowd filing into Memorial Stadium on the campus of the University of California in Berkeley. They're set to watch a great Pac-10 showdown. This is Fox Sports Northwest and we bring you Pac-10 football, the 10th ranked Washington Huskies against the Golden Bears of the University of California. Hi everybody, I'm Todd Pickett along with Sonny Six Killer. We welcome you to Berkeley. First Pac-10 road game of the year for the Huskies. They're going for their 15th consecutive win against California. If Washington is to do that, the Huskies feel, Sonny, that they need to establish the ground game early. No question, they've really got to come to the forefront. I'll tell you what, and the offensive line needs to do it because Rashawn Sheehy is off to a big start this year at 6.1 yards a carry. Last year, very disappointing, so he's off to a big start. One of the other keys for Washington's running attack has been a position change for Benji Olsen that's made the Huskies stronger across the front. That's true. Due to injury, they moved him to the weak side. You see number 76 on the weak side here. The Huskies going to that side. Maurice Shaw with a big touchdown run because of that last week against Arizona State. The ground game very solid, but hey, this is the Pac-10. Don't forget the passing attack. We have two great wide receivers today. Talk about big play guys. We'll have them. I tell you, any quarterback would love to have these two young men. Jerome Pathon for the Huskies, number three in the country. Bobby Shaw, number four with two different styles, I might add. Jerome Payton right here, Brock Hewitt throwing the ball downfield, and you see Jerome has his man beat where the ball's thrown. He reacts to it, comes back acrobatically, and makes the grab for a score. Now, on the other side of the line, Todd, you've got Bobby Shaw, who has a quarterback, Jason Vetter. All he has to do is air it out because of his speed. He's able to get behind the defenders and haul in the big pass. Sonny, another big key going into this game has to be control of the line, and Washington feels they can dominate Cal in the line on both sides of the ball. Well, you need to. Both sides of the ball, defense, offense, but the Huskies really want to establish it on that offense. First meeting between these two schools since 1994. The last time they played here in Berkeley, the Huskies came from 13 down in the closing minutes. This pass from Hewitt De Bruner, capping a 24-23 come from behind victory for Washington over former assistant Keith Gilbertson in a showdown between two top 20 ranked teams. The Huskies will hope for similar results today. We're just about set for Washington and Cal. It comes your way next on Fox Sports Northwest. And we welcome you back to Berkeley as you see the crowd filing into this giant oval, one of the best, if not <laughs> number one, on the list of stadiums in which to watch a football game. That's what Sports Illustrated called it, and it's a beautiful sight today as Washington and Cal get set to square off. Cal coach Tom Holmo in his first year, BYU player and a former player with the 49ers as well. Washington won the toss and elects to receive, and California now breaking out of the uh, kick formation huddle. Back deep for the Huskies, there's Jim Lambright on the Washington sideline in his fifth year as the head coach. Jerome Payton and Joe Jarzinka are back deep. Different return man in for Washington now. And that's Jawarin Hooker who watches the ball go out of bounds. Brock Heward getting set to lead the offensive unit out on the field, and uh, just some, some small numbers he's put up so far this year, Sonny. Well, I tell you, 60% of pass completions, only one interception, which happened last week, and that was on a bad wheel. Wasn't, that was probably one of the worst passes I've ever seen Brock Heward throw. A phenomenal rating of 182.9 going into the game for this Husky attack. Washington will take the ball at the 35-yard line. play to that weak side and cracks it for extra yardage. Albert Dorsey leading the tacklers for Cal from his inside linebacker position. We take a look at the front for Washington. Coates, Olsen, Kruitz, Ward, and Dalen across the front. Conniff and Sheehy, Cleland at the tight end position. Watch for him today. And Coleman and Payton, of course, averaging better than 27 yards per reception for the Huskies. Sheehy picked up seven on the first play of the game. They'd like to average that per snap with the ground game. A little motion both sides, and then it looked as though Olsen jumped out of the line. A little movement down there, and Benji, of course, getting ready to pull. One thing that we talked about uh, yesterday, Todd, was the fact that he's relishing the fact he gets to pull instead of being on the strong side. Ball start. Offense. 
Jim Springer with the call against the Huskies. We take a look at the defensive lineup for Cal. Tobinio, Davis, Whiting, and Deloach, a group that has not recorded a lot of uh, sacks so far this year. Sanyika, Beck, and Flag in the linebacker positions in the secondary. Gardner, DiStefano, Smith, and Sirwanga. So Huskies get backed up five. We'll check off at the line now on this second and eight by Heward. Quick close that time as he finds Jeremy, uh, uh, excuse me, Jerome Payton on the outside and Kato Sirwanga making the tackle for Cal. One thing coming in they wanted to do was try to establish the quick passing game today, allow the receivers to catch and run after they make the reception right there. Sirwanga, no way was Jerome Payton going to have any room to run. To the 42 yard line and a third and three for Washington. With a counter for Sheehy and Cal gets some pressure in the backfield to drop in for a loss. Seiko Sanyika leading the tacklers for the Golden Bears. And we mentioned a minute ago, Sonny, they don't get a lot of pressure across the line of scrimmage, but they sure swarmed through on Sheehy that time. Oh, they absolutely did. They were trying to pull to the far side of the field with Rashawn Sheehy. Absolutely stuffed right in the middle. One thing the coaches didn't for the Huskies were trying to avoid early on in this game. Sean O'Loughlin averages at 39 and a half yards per punt. Bobby Shaw back ready to get his first touch. He averages seven yards per punt return. Low line driver and some room for Shaw to 25. Stutter step kind of set up the Washington defense. I thought he might try to break it outside, but he gets dropped at the 40 yard line to Ray Butler leading the tacklers downfield for the Huskies, but good field position for Cal on the opening drive for the Bears. I tell you, the Huskies don't want to have a lot of punts today, but if they do punt, they don't want those low punts to Bobby Shaw like that. A look at Justin Vetter, transfer from Saddleback Junior College, and he's put up some fairly impressive numbers as well. Nearly 62% completion from the 40 for the Bears. First give to Marcus Fields. I'll make it Tariq Smith, who is in on the start. Nigel Burton, the tackle for Washington, and the offensive unit for California, Welburn, Swillis, Newberry, Romero, and Shields across the front. White, Smith getting the start in the backfield. He was listed as third string. Surgeoner, Narti, and Shaw, who averages a little under 18 per reception. Play action for Smith. Better with lots of time looking long. A little bump and run and a nice recover by Jermaine Smith. As they were trying to find Kofi Narti, and he hesitated for a minute, gave a little bit of recovery time for Smith. We look at Washington defensively. You see Vetter's reaction saying, I, I underthrew you. Washington's defense, Campbell to Iaea getting the start, and Suki Wiggs, Chorak, Farms, Towns, and Jensen at the backers. Burton, Parrish, Smith, and Miller in the secondary. Third and five now for California. Veteran with a wide open pocket, first down and more as he'll get into Washington territory, slides to a stop at the 48-yard line. Sonny Tarek Smith was a, a, a holdout last week, had a hip problem, also disciplinary, but he's in today. We watch Vetter pick up this first down. We well, see Smith on the left side blocking here. Coming in the ball game, Mr. Vetter can scramble. He's rushed for nearly 100 yards this season, and they're picking up a key first down early. Smith was touted as an honors candidate and didn't even make the two deep coming into the game. He has the ball now and has room to the outside. Flag thrown, they'll bring it back for a hold. That's how he was able to turn the corner, right, Sonny? That's absolutely true. See where the official threw the flag right there on the end of the line of scrimmage, allowing Smith to get outside. Tony Parrish and Mel Miller in on the stop. This year, you see 175 rush yards. He has scored two TDs this season. Offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, repeat first down. Okay, Cal, this is one thing that's haunted this team the whole year, Todd, is penalties. And right off the get-go, you see it right on the line of scrimmage. I didn't quite see it on that replay unless they... There, you can see it right there. Right they hold there. Towns right on the corner. 
Yeah, Cal is the most penalized team in the conference coming into today's game, and even in their notes, as you see Tom Holmo's reaction, their penalties have cost them several long touchdown plays, not to mention drives. Smith off the left side, stopped at the 45-yard line. Jeremiah Farms leading the tacklers for Washington. Well, Jeremiah Farms is in there for the injured Marcus Hairston, another sophomore linebacker. Jeremiah is very tough. Not quite as big as Hairston, but he's very quick to the ball and to the runner. Redshirt freshman back in his stomping grounds, Valley High of Sacramento. It's a good look at Jerry Jensen, number 40 there. Todd had an outstanding game last week. Hopefully the Husky coaches hope he keeps carrying that load. We'll talk more about Jensen after this play because you made a good point before the game about Jerry's success, Sonny. Ball down on the ground, better picks it up and completes the pass to his tight end, Brian Surgener. Jensen on the tackle. Nice poise shown by Justin Vetter on this play. Sonny, you said one of the reasons that Jensen's been successful, of course, is because they focus so much on Jason Chorak that Jensen's been able to step up. That's true. On the other side of the line, you've got Jason Chorak, the All-American. And, you know, with all the things that Jerry Jensen's doing for this team with interceptions, key sacks, key tackles, uh, it could make him an All-American. You saw his numbers that earned him the defensive player of the week honors last week. Third and nine for the Bears. Shaw's first catch nearly broke a tackle. Mel Miller with a good close on the coverage, and it'll be just enough, it appears, for the first down. Well, they like to compare Mr. Shaw to a guy named Jerry Rice that plays in the Bay Area. You see on this play that he is absolutely hands man. And by that, I mean he catches the ball right here with his hands. He doesn't try to leap to catch the ball, which a lot of receivers do. But Bobby Shaw, you can tell, has a lot of talent. Well, and Tom Holmo has 49er in him. You saw that, just the quick slant. And if he breaks one seam, he can go. That's it. They'll spot it at the Washington 37. Nearly took the handoff away from Smith that time. He's hauled down. But Chorak getting through the line of scrimmage nearly leveled better before he could make the handoff. Mac Tuiaea on the tackle. Boy, let's watch Jason Chorak at work. He was there in a hurry. I'll tell you, look on the left side, Todd. Flying through there, untouched. Somebody messed up in their little blocking scheme up front. You don't want to let a guy like Jason Chorak free to roam and get back there in the backfield. Scheme is one thing, but <laughs> yeah, that, that was flat out goof. Big hole for Smith up the middle. He'll be close to first down yardage once again. Jerry Jensen on the stop for Washington, along with Jeremiah Farns. Okay, you've got a big guy up front, number 62 for the Cal Bears. Jeremy Newberry, who is really the catalyst, the mean guy on that offensive line. And you can't blame the Cal coaches for wanting to run up the middle behind him. He was a big key, and he was a probable for the game. They moved him, as you can see, at 6'5", 305. He's a big key to them in the front. Smith snowed under this time, tackled for a loss. Leading the uh, tacklers that time was Mac Tuiaea. Had some assistance from Jensen as well. Also see Marcus Hairston into the ball game, getting right into it, getting some good hits in there. Huskies really have to get a push in the middle, and Mac Tuiaea on that last play did so. But it's really a key against that offensive line. Trips right this time for the Bears from the 27. Better with a big opening once again. He's really read that well. He gets hauled down from behind by Jensen, but picks up big yardage all the way down to about the 16-yard line and again be very close to the first down. Watching you kind of backpedaling a little bit, Sonny. Well, they kind of watch out for Bobby Shaw. You know, everybody's trying to get back, 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 get in their little zone areas. And one thing that Cal's doing is they have a lot of people up front blocking. And fortunately for Vetter, he's got space to get upfield. One thing as a quarterback, Todd, is you just break it up the middle. Look there, you have four defenders right there covering three guys. Bobby Shaw actually breaks open and appears with Jermaine Smith coming on. But Vetter's doing the right thing. He's got to run, run up the middle. Almost looks like they had him bracketed on that one inside and out. Well, you know, the offensive line's taught to move them to the outside, creating that opening in the middle so they can throw the ball cleanly and also, if they need to, they can run up the middle. Better getting a little bit extra time to confer as the uh, officials took a while for the measurement. He's inches short, but uh, good poise for this young man who was an All-American Junior College selection. A little bit of uncertainty about him stepping in cold, but he's done a good job running the offensive attack. See the Bears have managed to hang on to the ball. They're also two for two so far on third down conversions, but Smith will not get this one. Tried to slide it outside, and Jensen and Towns are there to smack him. 
Lesser Towns known for some big hits. Fortunately for the Huskies, come up with a big one right there. No way, no opportunity for Smith to get outside on this one. There's a good look right here. You see, he's going to come from the left side, just crashing through. He was able to get inside the trap block oh, before absolutely. they could set it up. Leading tackler for Washington. Well, he's in there for a lot of reasons, not only because he's physical, but he also has excellent speed and, and can react to the ball carrier very quickly. Fourth down for Cal, Ignacio Brache will come on to attempt a field goal. He's three for three this year. This would equal his season long of 35 yards. Shaw is the holder. Pulls the high snap down. Huskies almost got a block on it, and Brache misses. Pushed it to the right, Todd. Pressure on both sides from Parrish and Burton. The Huskies will have the ball when we return. 7.45 to play in the first quarter. No score between Washington and Cal. The Husky band in attendance in Berkeley as Washington takes over at the 20-yard line following the missed field goal attempt. Cleland out near the 30-yard line before he's pulled down. We talked about looking for the tight end today. Albert Dorsey on the tackle. Cameron Cleland with just eight catches so far this year, Sonny, but he's an inviting target there at 6'4", 275. Well, those 85 numbers really stick out when you're a quarterback. <laughs> I'd look for him, too. One thing you want to do with the... One thing by throwing to the tight end, Todd, it really keeps those linebackers honest. You throw those short, quick passes to him, and all of a sudden you come back with that big run. Gain of eight on the play for Cleland. Tight set in Cleland, the motion man now. Almost looked as though he didn't set. They'll give it to the up man, Pat Conniff. Ball loose. Washington will maintain possession. Try to see who has it as they unstack. The official had already called it a Husky football. Yeah, I was trying to see if anybody had, had recovered it in particular, but I think Pat kept with it. Good enough for the first down as he comes off. Jim Lambite figuring out what to do here on first and 10 at the 32. Cleland splitting out. The Huskies go to a four receiver look. Brock with a switch at the line. Sheehy, short game, swarmed under. Blue and gold players everywhere. Sanyika leading the tacklers. Cal's been real aggressive against the run so far, son. Well, they have been. They're really trying to stuff it up front. They're shooting people through the gaps right there, playing some games. You can see right there a little loop action. Rashawn looks like uh, the offensive line will just have to adjust to some of the games the defensive line's playing. Albert Dorsey coming up to help assist on that close and hold it to a one-yard gain. Cleland flipping over once again. Another quick out, this one for Fred Coleman, a little bit too tall for him. Derek Gardner on the coverage for Cal. Coleman a little overlooked sometimes with Faithon on the other side, but he's averaging better than 16 yards a catch as you get a look at Derek Gardner, the junior from Oakland, and there's Coleman. Well, Brock Heward and Jerome Payton have worked out really hard this last summer, and one thing a quarterback will do, it seems like you don't mean to, but you end up not let you favor him, but you end up looking for one receiver over another in certain situations. Well, when he comes through the way Jerome has, no wonder. Who's going to come through now on third and nine? Coleman, the motion man. Backside for Sheehy, nearly broke it. Good pursuit that time by Albert Dorsey, the inside linebacker. Smart call, Sonny, another step, and Sheehy might break it all the way. Well, they had to get rid of it quick with the Cal Bears blitzing on the play, getting it off to a running back. And, you know, that was a situation where if he shakes him a little bit, he's gone. But uh, good defensive play by Cal. O'Laughlin set to punt, and Delta O'Neill, who was scheduled to start in the backfield, had a good game for Cal and has played well. He's back deep this time to return the punt. <laughs> Another low one, O'Neill able to take it at the 26. 34-yard punt, he nearly broke it, got tripped up just over the 40-yard line. Marcus Hairston leading the tacklers that time for Washington. From the 44-yard line, Vetter for Smith, put it a little bit behind him. 
he had some room to turn that time if he'd been able to make the reception. Mel Miller was the closest defensive back to him, and he had a good six or seven yard cushion. So. Oh, he did. You know, you had the Cal receivers on the near side, Bobby Shaw going towards the middle, Nigel Burton, and uh, I can't remember, it's Mel Miller got tangled up there, and uh, boy, a good pass. He'd had some big yardage. We've seen both teams now trying to slide that back out into the flat. The Cal does like to do that, though. They like to throw to the flat. Smith. Tries to turn the corner, three purple and white clad players there. Farms along with Jabari Issa in for the first time today. Well, they know they like to get outside like that. The UW defense on the left side certainly can see this play coming and everybody coming down the line. Jeremiah Farms right there doing textbook manner and making the tackle. No gain again in a third and ten. You get a look at Farms taking a break on the sideline as the Huskies go into the long distance package. Shovel pass. Wide open once again and the good for a first down as they shovel it to Mark Vera. Back up fullback. Nigel Burton made the tackle. Sunny for a minute that looked like a broken play the way Vera hesitated. It did and a couple times now in the first quarter. Very close to being a turnover for the Huskies but here the Cal Bears Good timing right there. Chris Campbell reacting to it. Good wall block up there by John Romero. Big 73. Excellent call. There's a look at Vera. He has nine catches and has rushed the ball only once this year. Smith on the next carry, and he'll pick up another first down inside the 30. Farms and Parrish on the ball. We expected one team to move the ball up and down the field, Sonny, but it wasn't the team in blue and gold. They've done a good job so far. <laughs> well, you have to give that call, Cal offensive line a lot of credit up there. You know, we mentioned Jeremy Newberry. He is a big stud, but those other guys up front are pretty good size. John Romero, that right guard is 315 pounds. From the 29-yard line now, Bears missed a field goal after their first possession. Smith stopped after about a yard and a half gain. Good leg drive to get forward. Issa, Chorak, both there on the stop. Well, you know, a team doesn't average over 30 points a game with not being able to move the football a little bit. Suki Wiggs also in on the stop for the Huskies. And they'll call it a yard gain. There's a look at Suki, the senior from O'Day. Joshua White, the up back for Smith now on this second down. Shaw repositions. Huskies bring some pressure. Shaw making a diving catch. He held on to it. Nice adjustment to the ball. That was more the Payton play that time. Burton and Miller on the coverage. And we see Bobby Shaw make a good twist back, Sonny. Well, one thing we know, we saw him adjust his stance. He moved inside the numbers a little further to give him room to break away and give the quarterback room to throw the ball low and away so nobody's going to get it but your receiver. And Bobby Shaw right there, you can see, he catches the ball in his hands. That was an interesting adjustment, wasn't it? It almost would tip off to a defensive back that he's looking to run the out. Well, it also could tip him off that he's setting him up for something down that's the road. That's true. Yeah, you, you don't anticipate with Shaw, that's for sure. He's split to the top of your screen now from the 22. Smith tripped up in the backfield. Jensen got a piece of him. If they spot it right, he should be well short. Excellent job by Jerry Jensen. I tell you, coming up with a big play again. Doesn't look like much, but John Romero, the big horse for Cal, could not get to him. And be able to, and Jerry Jensen on the right side, you'll see him. John Romero, 73, pulling. That's his man. Jerry Jensen avoids the block and sticks that big paw out there and knock him down. Crowd applauds because Tom Homo has decided to bypass the field goal attempt this time. Fourth and three from the 22. Trying to get him to jump offside. And they won't get it. Cal takes its first time out. We will step aside for a minute as well and see what Tom Homo decides to do after the break. No score in Berkeley. We welcome you back to Berkeley once again. California now will go ahead and line up for the field goal attempt. Tom Homo talking to a couple players on the sidelines. His Ignacio Brache, a redshirt sophomore from Sun Valley, California, gets set. Missed his first of the season on the last possession. And he's lined up this time for what would be a season long for him, just over 39 yards. Shaw, the, the holder. Newberry is the snapper. 
They'll call it 40 officially, and now it's going to become 45. Almost looked like there John was a fake set up. John Wellborn jumping that time on the right side. Good ball. Ball start. Offense. Five yards. Still fourth down. Now, if you think it's out of range, uh, believe me, Brachet's got quite the leg. He had a uh, series of long field goals in high school. I'm trying to look before I think. I think he had a 65-yarder as his longest, if I remember right. Yes, he had a 65 and a 60-yarder his senior year in high school. This one from 45, so he has the leg low and blocked. Huskies getting a piece of it, and so Brochet comes up empty once again. It's hard to tell when you see all these hands sticking up in there, Todd, but it could have been Mac Tuiaea, the big horse in the middle, number 78 for the Huskies. Give Cal some credit there. Vera hustling down just in case there were any play on the ball at all, but Washington will take over. And the Huskies will have the football now at the 27-yard line. They set up a little bit deep for the hold, made it an eight-yard to try to get him a little more room, and he still wasn't able to get it up enough. Well, with 2.28 left in the first quarter, we talked about the, that establishing offensive line to run. So far, the Huskies have nine rushing yards. Straight up the middle that time and a short gain for Sheehy as he's pulled back out of the stack. Battle of two good defensive units. Call it a gain of five on that play for Sheehy. Before the line surge took him back. A lot of scrambling both sides here as they reset. He wants again good leg drive pushed back from about the 35 yard line Marquis Smith and Derek Gardner leading the tackles for Cal so he'll be a couple yards short of the first down good power play there you got to establish that a little bit and, and fortunately they're gaining four yards at a crack early on or Cal was doing a great job mixing it up in there see a game playing, being played again right up front Sonny, we saw the Bears flip-flop their sides of the line prior to that snap, so Cal's obviously got some matchups that they want to get against certain personnel. Sheehy, the motion man on third and two. Conniff in the backfield gets the call. Good drive to get the first down. Got a little crack on the right side of the line, Sonny, but he kept the legs going to pick that up. We well, ran to that side we were talking about. Benji Olsen, 76, Tony Coates on the near side. Pat Conniff, a true freshman coming in, and he really stepped it up. I think since spring, excuse me, since fall started, he's really moved up that depth chart. And George Kieho, who had left the program, allowing Conniff the opportunity to start. Right up the middle. Chris easily on the tackle. Conniff with just one carry coming into today's game, and he picks up the first down at the 38-yard line. You were looking long, trying to get Payton against double coverage, held it up just a bit, and got batted away. That ball holding up just for a second, or he might have been able to break it. Marquis Smith on the coverage. He got some help from Kato Sawanga. On the left side, you can see Jerome Payton. Actually, Sawanga was beat right there. Brock just didn't lay it out for him. You know. People forget Jerome Payton also runs below 4 4 40, so you, you can hang out there quite a ways and he can catch it. Did try to finesse that one just a bit, perhaps. Brock off to a three for five start passing for 20 yards. Huskies with 40 yards of total offense here as we get near the end of the first quarter. Cal with 88. Here to Cleveland, wide open flag thrown on the far side. Ball squirts loose, still loose. Payton tried to roll to it. The Bears have it if they call it a fumble. James Gibson appeared to come back and recover it from the nose tackle position. The flag upfield will likely be against Washington. And Jim Springer will sort it out. 
Defense. It's against Cal. What a break oh, for Washington. Big break. Against California. Usually well, when you see the flag out there, Todd, no, you see motion or illegal shift. Or a hold on the wide receiver, I thought, perhaps, too. Look at just a little out route there for Cleland. Husky coach is trying to get the ball to him, but you see that guy bringing in that helmet. You got to put both hands around that ball. Big break for the Huskies. Marquis Smith knocking it loose. Gibson fell on it, but it all comes back and stays with Washington. Cam's tried to claim that the ground caused the fumble, but it yeah. was that big blue helmet. I saw him <laughs> motioning somehow. I don't think the ground rose up to belt level on that no. play. So. But again, a crucial penalty for the Cal Bears. Their third one today. But both you and I have read all the info on this team, and I tell you, it's just amazing what they have lost. Right there, change of possession and momentum, and they give it up. So a second and five, closing seconds of this first quarter. Heward making a change once again. Here they come. Coleman made a nice break on the ball. He nearly turned it outside. Derek Gardner pulling him down. It'll be good for the first down at the Cal 46-yard line. That's a good uh, blitz call. You got your first out, quick out on the outside. Cal has been blitzing the Huskies a little bit here in the first quarter. Brock's had to get rid of the football quicker than he'd like to. That little out pattern, too, really sets him up for a, a fly down the sideline a little bit later, too, that type of a route. See if they get the snap off before the end of the quarter, and they won't. Time has expired after one quarter of play. Teams moving the ball up and down the field, but Cal goes empty from two field goal attempts, and we are scoreless after one quarter. Washington and California coming your way on Fox Sports Northwest. Fleet week in the San Francisco Bay Area. The Blue Angels doing flybys over the bay and out and around the vicinity of Memorial Stadium. This 74-year-old facility looking very dapper as we get set for the start of the second quarter between the Huskies and Bears. And Sonny, you were talking about Brock Hewitt and how he's been sort of floating the ball a little bit so far. Well, it just seems off that left ankle he injured against Nebraska, that one he seems to be throwing off his front foot a little bit, and, and uh, the ball seemed to float on that last throw. And I was just wondering, you know, coaches say he's back He's back, but I wonder how far back he really is. Well, but you know, too, when you come back from an injury, even though you're healed mentally, you still try to favor it sometimes. That's, that's true. From the Cal 46-yard line, Sheehy, well, he really sets up the block so nicely that time, turned uh, what might have been a no-gain into a positive advance. Gibson and DiStefano on the tackle for Cal. One thing he's been doing, Todd, is he's been running up where the blocking scheme calls him to run, you know, off tackle, inside the guard. And in some games in the past, you don't see it and look kind of crowded. He'll dart to the outside. This time he's actually hitting at the point of attack. You see the patch on the California players' uniforms that commemorating the 100th big game. The Cal-Stanford rivalry will celebrate its 100th edition at the end of this season. A look at Rashawn Sheedy, who picked up three on that first carry. All day for Heward again, looking deep for Payton. And floated it just a bit beyond Jerome, unable to adjust to it. Kato Sawanga was beaten once again by Payton. Yes, he was. And again, Brock Heward, uh, you know, they didn't throw too many of these passes in the last couple of weeks. They've been working on that running game last week and had a week off. So in a game, it always changes your, your throw it just a slight bit. And when you're throwing it 50 yards downfield, one little change will really throw you off. A good look at this beautiful grass field at Memorial Stadium. I'm Tom Pickett along with Sonny Six Killer early in the second quarter in a scoreless game between these two teams. A third and long situation now for Washington. Cleveland flips to the bottom of the line this time. For Cleveland, breaks his tackler and has room to go. Dan Cleveland is going to take it in. Washington is on the board. Well, Todd, I, talk, I promised Cam Cleveland's dad that they were going to throw to Cam today. I didn't promise him the touchdown, but I did promise him the throw. 43-yard touchdown pass, and uh, Mr. Cleveland, you got six on the board. You look at the Cal defense here, you can see they're bringing people. Seven people coming to get Brock. 
All you got to do is break one little DB's tackle on a 275 pounder, and you're going to go somewhere. Yeah, Pete DiStefano is not going to bring him down with an arm drag or with a one hand around the ankle. Nick Lentz, who has won the uh, kicking honors now, he's two for three on PATs, and the freshman puts this one through. 43-yard touchdown pass from Heward to Cleland and Washington takes the lead early in the second quarter. This is Pac-10 football coming your way on Fox Sports Northwest. Opening seconds of the second quarter and Washington gets the passing attack in high gear. Lentz set to kick off. Philip Pipersburg back deep along with Delta O'Neill for Cal. O'Neill will take this a couple yards deep, thought about it, and then puts it down for the touchback. So Justin Vetter and the Bears now playing catch up for the first time, and they'll show a trips to the left side on their opening play from the 20. Empty the backfield now as Vera goes in motion. And they'll find Vera out in the flat. Good for about four or five. First pop there by Tony Parrish, and then he spun out of bounds, but a good job of Parrish to get upfield in a hurry. Well, you have all the wideouts to the near side of the field on a trip set, and they go back to the far side, throwing the ball out there to uh, Vera. But watch Tony Parrish, number seven, reacting to the play, reading it, getting in front of the guy that's trying to block him, surging her there, and making a good hit. And there's Towns coming all the way across to assist as well. Five on the play. Interesting, we said with Vera, just one rush all year, and he's got now 10 receptions. O'Neal, wow, what a nice lateral cutback that was to pick up some extra yardage. Where'd that, that move come from, huh? Direction. I can't even walk that way, and he does it on the fly. O'Neal's got a lot of speed, can return kicks. Getting a lot of playing time with Tariq Smith uh, with his hip injury. Lester Towns leading the tacklers for Washington that time. Better with a little rollout for Shaw. He breaks it back to the sideline and picks up the first down right beyond the 40-yard line to Ray Butler on the coverage for Washington. I don't know if... Uh, Here's the thing that Vetter likes to do. He will roll out. Obviously, he can throw in the run. He likes to scramble, so you got to watch that. There, Bobby Shaw coming back in coverage. Teray Butler into the game for Jermaine Smith. Not quite sure if Jermaine is out due to injury, or, or they just want to give Teray Butler some playing time. Huskies had hoped to do that. In fact, uh, they also talked about getting Tuiasa Sopo some time at quarterback today. That was Shaw's third catch, by the way, as O'Neill carries on first down. Jerry Jensen on the stop for Washington. Cal now with 109 yards of total offense. Washington with just 23 yards rushing, Sonny, out of their 97 total. A look at Shaw, three catches, 30 yards game pressure this time and he just dumped it there wasn't anybody yeah. there and they'll call the ground absolutely good call Nigel Burton the pressure man from the rover position better will argue but yeah you had a guy in the zone but you weren't throwing it toward him at all Justin. well he's trying to say O'Neill was blocking but O'Neill clearly was blocking uh, was blocking uh, O'Neill was not out in the pattern for better that time oh I guess they even though he was blocking I guess he was in the area I thought uh, okay it, it, it must be uh, must be about the same area that the Blue Angels used to turn their planes around in then. Well, I can tell you, it didn't look like it was going to be a screen, but he's right there being held up. Looked to me from up here that he was trying to block. Yeah. He had been trying to set up a screen, but it was all came apart when Nigel Burton blitzed him. He did such a good job of holding his block there and disguising <laughs> that screen pass. All right, we'll give him credit. An incomplete. Nice pressure from Burton. They'll try to bring the house again. That one thrown a little bit behind, but caught. Nice adjustment. Bruce Pierre, the uh, receiver, Mel Miller the, on the uh, catch. 
That's the first reception of the season for Bruce Pierre as he gets congratulated over on the Cal sidelines. He's the normal backup to Bobby Shaw and hadn't caught a ball all season until now. Well, it's a nice catch, but also that throw was maybe slightly behind him, but it was right into his body. Picks up the first down at the Washington 47. Cal has gone into Husky territory on each possession. Better readjusting his back spread of the snap under some pressure. Flag thrown back behind the play, probably for a hold against Cal. It was a very late throw, and it was well after Better had gotten outside of the pocket. Burton and Butler cover on the, on the far side. You got Jason Chorak doing the old holding sign. <laughs> Usually when you see Jason, his jersey is kind of torn around backwards and upside down. You know somebody's grabbing him. John Wellborn matched up against Chorak. Watch it here, 64 for Cal on Chorak at the bottom. Well, that's it. Right him on down. Nice wrestling move. That's take down two points. <laughs> that's, that's two. The wrestler is supposed to be Newberry, the center. I don't know. He's kind of <laughs> Wellborn. He's been sharing the wealth. <laughs> It'll take it back to the... 36 yard line for California. They have to get to the Washington, just inside the Washington 38 yard line. Marcus Fields, the ball carrier, a freshman from Stag High School in Stockton. Marcus Hairston making the tackle for Washington. That many yards to go, you can give him a nice little six yard run. Marcus Fields. Everybody says is all the ability in the world to become an all-pack-10 performer down the road. That was Cal's biggest problem was depth at the tailback. They had O'Neill and Fields, and there's Smith, who was a conference honoree last season, was a number three position coming into the game. Luxury a lot of teams would like to have. Huskies adjusting their slants on second and 20. Batted down, tried to find the tight end over the middle, and I think Suki Wiggs was the man who got a hand on that one. Good job by Suki Wiggs. You know, better not being a very, he's only about six feet tall, and they say, is that? Suki Wiggs keeping his eyeballs right on him. You can see right here, Suki sees him starting to throw the ball. Hey, just push off on those big offensive linemen. You know, Kevin Swillis? Yeah, it looked like, up in the air. It looked like Swillis was trying to cut him and bring him down a little bit, and Suki was able to play off it. Well, you, you're taught, the offensive linemen are taught. You see the defensive linemen starting to jump. Bam him right now below the waist. Third and 20 for the Bears. Huskies in a bit of a cushion. Better trying to throw underneath for Smith, and he is covered tightly by Lester Towns. There was nothing open downfield as well. Good coverage all the way around by Washington. Good job by the Husky coaching staff to see that play coming. California set to punt. Nick Harris will come on. Freshman from Phoenix. Average is just under 42 yards a kick. You see Payton back deep for Washington. And they'll run the fake. They've got the corner. Harris with some good speed gets smacked well short. Boy, Tom Holmo's doing all kinds of tricks in the kicking game so far. Mike Reed leading the tacklers, and Washington gets the ball out at midfield. I'm a little surprised by that call at this point of a 7-0 game. I can see it if it's a little under 10 yards, but I'm not sure with nearly, what, 20 yards and then some to go for it. Good job by the Huskies here to, even though they're being held, like Todd Johnson right there, the guy can't let go of his jersey, come up and give him a big hit. That's a long ways to go for a fake punt. I mean, I, I'm sure he's got great ability, but, uh, boy. Well, Washington takes over right at midfield, and that could be a big, big break for the Huskies. Give them a short field to work with after they went 69 yards in eight plays last time. Sheehy around the left side for some good yardage. Great job of sealing off by the left side of the line that time. Katosha Wonga leads the tacklers for Cal. A lot of daylight for Rashawn around that corner, Sonny. Oh, it's good blocking on the end on the far side of the field. Rashawn Sheehy, you see here with his speed, see they tried to play a game up front. Good job by Tony Coates, 67, to pick that thing up. Allowing uh, Rashawn Sheehy to get outside. Excellent job up front by the offensive line. Second in inches, so statistically a nine yard gain for Sheehy on the play. Huskies also had Reggie Davis in last time. 
in the backfield, and he is down at the uh, tight end slot and seemed to slot off the line this time on second and short. Coleman in motion. And Sheehy popped it outside, first down and more. Ball knocked loose after he went out of bounds. Marquis Smith on the tackle. That's one of those situations, Sonny, Son where sometimes you look to gamble on a second and just inches to go, but Washington picking up plenty of yardage on that running play. Well, my, my eyeballs were on Jerome Payton because it was less than a yard. I thought they might go deep on play that Play action one. and go, yeah. But, you know, the coaches are they're smarter than we are, you know, so they, they could make the first down. It's nice to see, see what they were hammering early into the offensive uh, line in between the tackles. Last couple of plays, the shots maybe used that speed and got outside. You saw he's upped his average to a little over four yards a carry with those last two runs. And it's a first down from the 31. A lot of scrambling again by both teams. Heward looking for Payton. He beat the defender, tries to adjust, can't get to it. Sarwanda, the man covering. Husky fans want a flag, but I think it was a pretty fair job of covering that time by Kato Sarwanda. Brock has just, just been off Brock Heward. A little bit on the long throws, timing-wise, with the receivers. That time, you know, you see those long, you're taught, taught when you're going down on the, on the streak route, throw it to the outside shoulder, which it appeared he did right here. But again, he's not really stepping in through to the, the football. And a lot of times that ball will sail on you if you're throwing off your front foot and it's all on. Brock has the wind behind him, but right before that break, we saw Jerome actually went to the inside on Sawanga and had him beat, and then he had to readjust. Little uh, mix up there prior to the snap. Ball. Ball start. Offense. Five yards. Still second down. Make it a second and 15 for Washington. Okay, these players have got to be really loving playing down there on that field today, Todd. It was absolutely perfect day for football. We came out yesterday and watched a little bit of practice, and they were just enthusiastic as all get up. And this is a, the flattest field I think either one of us has ever seen. There's no crown to this thing. And not quite Field of Dreams, but it's got to be awfully close. It's a beautiful track. Another quick out for Payton inside the 30-yard line. Sir Wonga and David Burnside tackling. Just a real simple route that time to try to let him break it loose. Well, he's got so much ability. He's so agile and quick that uh, one little missed tackle like we saw earlier with Cam Cleveland, and you could go the distance. Payton taking it to the 28. It's a third and seven there for Washington. Cleveland clearing out some space for Payton. He stretches, but is going to be just short, it appears. Sir Wonga making the tackle. Boy, Cam Cleland ran a great clear out down the middle that time, Sonny. Yes, he did, and I tell you, Brock is very lucky to get that ball off. Sanika has been coming all afternoon, number 13 for the Bears, but there's a nice clear route. Cam Cleland, you're absolutely correct, Todd. It's what you like to do, clear him out, bring the guy underneath, and just a little bit short of the first down. They'll bring the sticks out to measure it. Very little. Jim Lambright taking a look about. Well, it's a good opportunity to bring in uh, Marcus Tuyasa Sopo and let him uh, run that little quarterback sneak. <laughs> Marcus is supposed to get a series here in the second quarter. Again, it depends on field situation and the score. Hewitt having to reposition a little bit now. Empty backfield as Conniff stretches it. Brock will push it over. It's going to be close as he drives second time and gets a favorable spot. It'll be a first down right at the 20-yard line. Sarwanga trying to argue, but you can see the side judge with the spot. And he made a, he made a left foot spot instead of a right foot spot. <laughs> Well, Brock's a big young man, so uh, it doesn't take much for him to pick up a few inches. 
Brock will like that because it gets him more towards the positive side for season rushing, of course, with the uh, sacks. He's uh, 20 yards negative overall, and I know quarterbacks love to have that plus rush. <laughs> right at the 20-yard line. Sheehy stepped around uh, one Cal defender who got in early, but good interior pursuit that time for the Bears. Brandon Whiting leading the tacklers. You get a look here at the senior from Long Beach, Poly High. I'll tell you though, number 13, Sanika for the Cal Bears has been blitzing. He disrupted that play right there, getting inside Cam Cleveland, allowing the defense to make the play, but he's been all over the place. It's a good look at him. Here's what Washington's done inside the 20 so far this season, 14 out of the 19 times. Hewitt under some pressure, broke one, but he'll be swarmed under. I think Jacob Wasdorf was the first guy to get to him, the freshman from Lancaster, California. Well, good job by Jacob Wasdorf, I tell you right here, coming up the middle, but see Brock Hewitt looking downfield. He's looking at a couple of locations. Cam Cleveland right there being double teamed in the middle. Nobody open, allowing Wasdorf the time to drop him. Sonny, we're seeing Cal scramble a lot defensively right before the snap. What does Brock Hewitt have to do in that situation, and how much reading does he have to do after the defense adjusts? Well, what it is really, Todd, is the offensive line. Just like the Huskies like to move around a little bit, but if you're zone blocking, it's no problem. But if you're supposed to block a certain man it really disrupts the, the whole scheme play stop before they can snap the ball no snap delay a game offense five yards still third down 25 second clocks are right above the tunnel entrances here underneath the stands there you see it Homo, a defensive back in his professional career, watches his, his defense gets five more yards with which to work. Huskies need to get it to the 10. He would hit as he throws, looking outside and too tall for Coleman. Gary Gardner was there on the coverage. Justin Flagg was putting pressure on Hewitt. A lot of pressure. Cal Bears doing an excellent job of getting back in the Brock's face a little bit here. A lot of tradition in this stadium, Sonny. These fans come out, win, lose, draw. But you get a feeling they're just looking for something to cheer for, and the defensive unit gave them a lift right now. Well, they should be proud of the team. They're holding the Huskies here, and have, forcing them to go for a field goal. This will be Nick Lent's first field goal attempt of the season, 47-yard attempt. And another whistle before the snap. Timeout called, I think, Timeout. by Washington. Washington yes. Number yeah. one. Huskies take their first pause. We're midway through the second quarter. Washington leads California 7 to nothing. We'll have more action from Berkeley after this timeout. Part of the campus up in the hills in the East Bay at the University of California. Huskies uh, apparently calling timeout because they had 12 men on the field prior to that kick, so give, give somebody some credit for spotting it and making the call. Nick Lentz from Curtis High in Tacoma. No, nothing like having a chip shot for your first collegiate field goal <laughs> attempt, huh? Well, field goal kickers, I'm sure, would like to make these. I mean, they, they have a lot of pride, Todd. They like to get distance on their field goals. Wind picks up just a little bit now. It is at the back of Lentz and, and looks to be pretty straight. The wind really swirls around this bowl sometimes. And that one has the distance, but misses. For a minute, I didn't think it was going to get there, but it held up well. Lentz just pulled it to the right. California will take over. Not an ideal snap for Nick on his first long attempt. Uh, good job by Ryan Chacon to get it in position for him to kick it. Smith, the ball carrier, kept his balance nicely and found an opening. 
Tony Parrish and Jeremiah Farms on the tackle, but Tarek Smith kind of turned that one nicely upfield himself. Oh, he had a good wall out there to run up into. Uh, you look at their fullback, Joshua White, number 40, big boy and a very good blocker right there. A good block on Lester Towns. And Tarek Smith just turning it upfield. That's what they're supposed to do, and he picked up some good yardage. From the 38, Smith will not get anywhere this time. Good line surge by Washington. Farms coming up the middle, leading the way. Nigel Burton also there from the rover spot. You look at Jason Trorak's jersey. Right up there where the play was intended to go, you'll see uh, Jason Trorak on the left-hand side. Jeremiah Farms stepping right in there. Good job. When he sees that tackle block, that guard blocking down like that, he's going to fill the hole, and he did it just right. Third and two for California. From the 37. Better on that little quick rollout, just a hair too strong for Shaw. Burton was right there with him. Good coverage that time. That had to be a perfect pass. And as good as Bobby Shaw is, you can see Justin Vetter, a little disappointed in himself. He knows it. Not an easy pass to complete, Todd, when you're ro rolling out that way and throwing at that angle. It's got to be right on near the body, but uh, tough. good job by Nigel Burt. Very true. Good coverage there. And Sonny, we've really seen Washington's defense settle down, as it were, a little bit and start to contain Cal after those two initial drives by the Bears. Harris set to punt. Payton back deep. We took a long time. Hangs up a beauty, but nearly paid for it. Payton falls down right at the 23-yard line. 40-yard punt, no return. Washington will have the ball when we come back. The Huskies lead the Bears 7-0 on Fox Sports Northwest. Tightwad Hill is what they call that facility, and you'll see why as our cameras pull back. You can get up there and get a free seat. Don't Tight have to pay to get it. That's what it's called, trust me. I love it. Yep, Heward falling down, manages to get the ball dished back to Maurice Shaw. They're saying that Brock's knee was down before he made the handoff for a loss of a couple yards there, Todd. Watch Olin Kruitz's, oh, actually it was Chad Ward's left foot, the, the guard, number 71. Boy, that's a tough call. A little hard to see from that angle, but I thought Brock had gotten rid of it. It was a pretty nice athletic play to try to complete it, but uh, they'll march it back three yards. That seems like a little cheesy call. <laughs> hey, there's a guy who's uh, at a freshman, 6'5", 310, Chad Ward. I'll hate to see him when he hits his growth spurt. <laughs> Another quick out ball tip that'll go incomplete. Tried to find Coleman that time. Some pretty good pressure. Sanyika with the tip. And I know he's really impressed you so far, Sonny. Yes, he has. He's been all over the field for the Cal defense. He's been on the blitz. He's that time he's trying to get now he's trying to get the crowd into it. But right here you see a guy, Jerry Deloach, 98 right there. Getting inside the blocker to disrupt the throw. That's way too much penetration if you're a Husky offensive lineman. Aaron Dalen, number 75. Got it up in his face. Heward's going to have to use another timeout here as the Huskies were running out of time. It's their second timeout. It's third and long for Washington when we come back deep in their own territory. Huskies lead the Bears 7 0. Back at Memorial Stadium. Washington with a little bit of conference on this third and 13 from inside their own territory. Sonny with just a seven point lead, you have the tendency to be a little bit protective at a point like this on the field. Well, you do, but uh, Cal defense, you gotta give them a lot of credit. They've, they've had to replace a lot of people over there. They're starting a lot of sophomores. Uh, they've got a true freshman there, uh, number 73, Andre Carter, they're doing a job. We saw Washington's conversion thus far, just two out of six. They need to take this one out over the 33-yard line. Some pressure for Heward. Inside it goes. First down and more for Washington. Nice cut by Coleman as he takes it nearly to the 45-yard line before Sirwanga knocks him down. That's one of those quick slant runs we talked about off the top, Sonny. That's right. You know, one thing we've seen, other teams do this to the Huskies a lot. 
clear it out a little bit. You see the left side. Cam Cleveland again, the big horse going down the middle for the Huskies, clearing it out. Middle linebacker getting, well, actually, it's our man right there, Sanika. He Sanyika. pulled Sanyika right off, did Cleveland, didn't he? Yeah, we give that man all the accolades, and then he blows an assignment. <laughs> Good job by the Huskies. Good call. Good job getting Freddie Coleman into the offense. Out to the 45 yard line. Coleman with uh, better than 18 yards to catch so far, taking a breather. Hewitt ran right into the defender that time. He tried to play off the block. Waiting for him to make a whistle before he gets wrapped up. Matt Beck, the sophomore from the inside linebacker position. And then Hewitt and Chad Ward, a little miscommunication there as uh, Brock was trying to read which way the block was going to go. I agree with you, Todd. Like Brock's getting a little bit frustrated. You see him pulling out Chad Ward, 71, getting out there now. I don't know if I can lay the blame on Chad Ward. Oh, on no blame, one. no, but it's just a matter of familiarity. Which way is my lineman going to take that guy, right? Well, normally they're going to take him away from the middle of the field. Yeah. The quarterback needs to step back up inside that. And he would have had a lot of time to deliver the football had he done that. Good point. Ten-yard drop, though. He would again readjusting with three wideouts now on this second and 20. Nice turn around the corner for Marie Shaw. Albert Dorsey on the tackle. Shaw averaging just under five yards a pop. You see Maurice last week, 94 yards. Nice touchdown run. Big drop off from Rashawn. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. get another 100 out of somebody yeah. else, no problem. <laughs> They'll spot him just over the 41-yard line. So again, Washington faced with a third and long situation. They need to take it to the Cal 45. Joe Terzinka in for the first time in motion. Here we're trying to find, I think, Payton. A little bit of confusion as both Payton and Terzinka were crossing over the middle. Jerry Deloach pressuring Hewitt on the release, and the Cal defense is held again. Good look at Jerry Deloach. Well, that guy's a big kid. He has been in that backfield several times today. Again, getting Brock Hewitt, giving him a good little love tap back there in the backfield. <laughs> nice terminology. O'Neill back deep for Cal. O'Loughlin set to punt once again. Got a much more height on this one. Look at the ball just turn over nicely. O'Neill deep in his own area. Takes it out over the 15-yard line before he is dropped. Gary Shavey leading the tacklers on special teams for Washington that time. That was a nice-looking punt by O'Loughlin. A little over three minutes to go here in the second quarter. Better trying to look long. That came out of his hand, I think. That just squirted right out. I don't think anybody got a piece of him. And a uh, little bit of frustration on the Husky <laughs> sidelines as Jeremiah Farms just about had it drop into his lap and he could have waltzed into the end zone. Well, it's not because of the rain, but it was kind of a funny drop back that Vetter did. Watch this. He, it's a play action pass right there, but he turns the other way. It's kind of a strange way to do it, looking downfield. What he saw was a safety right there on the left coming into your screen, and he tried to hold up with the ball. That's the fake pump fake. He's missed his last four attempts, so he hands to Smith instead. Gets by one DB. The pursuit will haul him down, but not before he picks up the first down. Lester Towns on the tackle, but Smith jumped right over Mel Miller to pick up the extra yardage. Great individual effort out there, but uh, again, Cal's doing a good job of walling that side off. Maybe we can get a look right here. He breaks it outside of Massey Humanity in there. Jeremiah Farms gets caught up and cannot get back outside and contain the running back and big yardage. Show you how effective that play was, Sonny. We saw the lead blocker right from the fullback position go around the corner and fall down. He didn't have anybody <laughs> to hit even that was so open. Takes it out to the 31 and another first down for Cal. They're over 150 yards of total offense now in the first half, but nothing to show for it on the board. A lot of their offense early was from that man better, and he picks up some plus yardage again before Suki Wiggs chases him down. Good coverage downfield by the Huskies, and Justin Vetter doing what he's been, as you said, doing real well this first half. Nobody open, just keep it and get some positive yardage. Five more for Vetter.
Bears letting a little time roll right now on the clock down to two and a half minutes. So not feeling uh, a lot of panic yet. Their first two drives stalled. You see the total offense so far in the first half, a little over 300 total. Huskies making a last second adjustment defensively. And Marcus Fields, the ball carrier for short yardage. Brings up another big third down for Cal. Campbell, Towns, Parrish all there for the Huskies that time. Be a third and two for California. There's a look at Fields. Has not lost a yard from scrimmage so far this season. Boy, I tell you, Cal's been playing a lot of people today. Get a lot of people, a lot of reps. And the guy who's getting the least amount of carries so far in the backfield is O'Neal, who's penciled in as the starter, but uh, <laughs> had some uh, injury questions going in. Open backfield, third and two, the little out to Shaw. Good for the first down. Tony Parrish covering for the Huskies, but that's been the little bread and butter route. Sonny, why is that clear out so successful? Well, one thing happens is number eight, the, the rover for the Huskies came on the play. You see him right there, number eight, comes into the play. That means he's not back out in coverage. It forces the free safety to come up and make the play. Parrish making the stop. Bobby Shaw closing in on the career receiving yards record. He already has a Cal record with nine hundred yard plus receiving games. From the Cal 43. Nice grab that time by Damian Douglas, his first catch of the day. Jermaine Smith covered for Washington. They say he did not get out of bounds, and the Huskies have an injured man coming off the field. Is that Chorak yes, coming it is. slowly? Yeah. Good throw by Vetter right there. Back live trying to find Shaw. The ball a little bit too strong for him as he was covered by uh, Burton and Miller. I was trying to watch on that replay. Did you see what happened to Jason? Roller? I couldn't quite pick it up in the replay, but they are he's looking at his shoulder. Yeah, so he was kind of favoring the shoulder as he came off the field. Vetter with a third and short situation now. Just over 50% so far. And on the dive, it'll be close. And they'll give him the left foot spot as well, I think. Good for the first down. Jabari Issa on the tackle for California. Good job by the public of Washington. Address announcer. Yeah. They're calling the first down before the official. He sold that one real well, didn't he? Bears will have to scramble a little bit now. We reach the one minute mark, and again, that time they burned, kind of being casual, might come back to haunt him. Motion both ways, but it looked as though Brian Shields came out of his stance prior to the snap. Dead ball, ball start, offense, five yards, still first down, clock will start on the ready. All right. Huskies have done a good job so far, Todd, not giving up the big pass completion to Mr. Shaw or the other receivers for Cal. And it's a good job by them, but also Cal's been able to hit those short ones. For Vera, nice recover there by Jerry Jensen. Boy, he just gets out and covers so quickly. For a second, I thought he may have stolen the ball away yeah. from Vera. Good reaction, senior ball player, co-captain. Bears are going to take a timeout now. They'll have one remaining. We watch Jerry Jensen sliding out for this stop on Vera. Well, we'll step aside first as you see Jensen taking a pause. Bears with just 35 seconds left in the half. Well, it's not quite Lake Washington, but it's water nonetheless. You can see lots of boats out on the water because of Fleet Week, the Navy in. In fact, uh, they're doing touch and goes off one of the aircraft carriers out in the base, so all the pleasure boats can go out and watch them do takeoff and landings off the deck of the aircraft carrier. Beautiful weather in the Bay Area for what they call Fleet Week, and uh, everybody who's gotten up, scraped together, and scraped the barnacles off the boat is out in the Bay today if they're not here at the football game. One timeout left for each team. Sonny talked about the short routes to Shaw so far. He's averaging just eight and a half yards a catch going to this play. 
good coverage there as they tried to uh, find the tight end Surgeoner and it got batted away. Marcus Hairston got a hand in the passing lane just in time. Better seem to take a long time on that one, Sonny. Well, he had time to throw the ball. That's a, that's a key. But Surgeoner down the middle, tough cap, tough grab to come up with with Marcus Hairston back there. But again, the key thing is the throw was within 10 yards. Cal hasn't really exploited the field up and down. And they've got to go for yardage now. It's third and 14. Pressure again, better flushed out, got away from both men. He's not going to get the first down unless he breaks a couple of tackles, and he came close. Boy, I'm going to give him some extra credit there. He calls a timeout coming up quickly. Issa finally hauled him down, but you thought his lunch was going to be handed to him a couple times, and he went right by him. Very shifty. Great attribute that Better has. See a couple Huskies back there in pursuit. You see Chris Campbell coming up the middle. Thought he had him. Jerry Jensen thought he had him. Excellent individual effort right there. Jason Chorak back in the game yeah. also can't come up with the tackle. There, there's the good news on that replay for Husky fans. So the Bears use their final timeout with 17 seconds left. They're facing a fourth and four. Well, we'll see what Tom Holmo comes up with because not only do you have to get a first down, then you got to figure out a way to stop the clock or do something. 17 seconds. Key thing, pick up the first down, give yourself another shot at the end zone, or try and get it close enough to get a field goal and yeah. get some points on the board. You got to get the first, then spike it, then get a play. It's going to be a tall order. We'll see what they do. Little underneath route. We'll get the first down and maybe more. One man left to beat, running out of bounds. Smart job that time by Delta O'Neill out of the backfield. That's where he came from. Tony Parrish chasing him out of bounds at the 18 with 10 seconds left. And uh, they certainly have a chance to get a couple strikes here. Nice delay, Sonny. Well, watch on the far side coming out. That is a nice delay. Good wall block there. And also the wide receiver, Nardi, right there made another key block that allowed Cal to pick up another 10 yards. O'Neill thought about fighting it upfield, but saw the pursuit closing on him, took it out of bounds, and gave the Bears at least one more shot. Front Tight end wide open. Yeah, Surgeon are in the middle. They go corner for Shaw instead. And Surgeon, they're in a, a jersey within 15 yards of him, and he has a right to be upset. His quarterback never looked for him at all. And he the Bears squander an opportunity for the tying touchdown. Boy, I tell you, better that time. There's a situation where you lock in on your key receiver the whole time. Watch right in the middle of your to screen. The way right, but there he is, Surgeon, are coming, I mean, wide open. But better had it in his mind he was going to go to his main man, Bobby Shaw. That play will be discussed during film review next week, yes. uh, I think, here in Berkeley, as you see Shaw taking a breather. <laughs> Brache, who's 0 for 2 so far, will try once again. It's being discussed on the sidelines. From 36, low line drive, and he got it. One second left on the clock. Got to be frustrating for Tom Homo, Sonny. His team with 210 yards of total offense now in the first half and just that last second field goal to show for it. Oh, it's unbelievable. It's, uh, penalties have uh, stopped him a couple times on some big plays. And the other side, the Huskies have really toughened up against him also. So they, they really kind of haven't hurt themselves that much. The Huskies got tough on him in the second quarter. Well, Bobby Shaw couldn't catch the pass, but here he is holding on the field goal attempt. Well, that's pretty good hands to be holding. Nice turn of the ball right there, too. Yes, good job. Says I'm one for one, the kicker's 0 for 2. <laughs> Bears get the field goal and get on the board. I really like that delay to O'Neill. They kind of snuck him out in that flank position and then brought him underneath on the screen. Warren Hooker to the bottom of your screen, Payton to the top, and don't expect either one of them to come near the ball with one second left. Brache sent to squib it. That'll probably run out the first half. One of the up men taking it, downs it, but the clock still will run out as Pat Connor fielded the ball. And that ends our first half of play. Maybe not as much scoring as we expected as both teams move the ball up and down the field, but don't put many points on the board. Halftime in Berkeley. The Huskies lead the Bears 7-3. Back to recap it after this timeout.
Welcome back to Berkeley Halftime with Washington leading California by a score of 7-3. to three. I'm Todd Pickett along with Sonny Sixkiller. Good job by the Husky defensive unit, but uh, a little bit of sputtering for the offense in the first half, Sonny. Well, I think you have to give a lot of credit to the Cal defense. They're doing a lot of stunning up front. They're bringing a lot of people, really disrupting the offensive blocking schemes of the Huskies, and, and the rushing yardage shows it. Big play of the first half. In fact, the only touchdown in the first half was Washington's. 43-yard touchdown pass to Cameron Cleland early in the second quarter. Well, the real highlight of the first half has been this play. Cam Cleveland not seen a lot of receptions so far this season in the last couple games, I should say. Big scoring play on this one. In fact, that one play is responsible for about a third of all of Washington's total offense in the first half. The biggest number, I think, Sonny, that stands out from that first half statistics has to be the 34 rushing yards for Washington. They wanted to establish the ground game going in. Well, that is absolutely true. And you take away all the, the sacking yardage of Brock Heward, and it still wouldn't be up to 50 yards. So the Cal defense, again, is doing a fantastic job. It's going to be real interesting to see what adjustments the teams make when they come back out onto the field to start the second half. We'll have that kickoff for you when we return to Berkeley on Fox Sports Northwest. We welcome you back to Berkeley, the Husky cheerleaders and band play. Huge traveling party of Husky fans as we get set. Lucy wasn't involved, but the ball came off the tee. Well, I just asked you about the wind being yeah. a factor on the floor. I guess there is. <laughs> ne next question. <laughs> It, when we were out yesterday, and it is funny, as I said, it really swirls around here. You can see the flags, but the wind blows very differently at top of stadium level versus the goalpost versus the floor. And it'll blow at one end of the field and be dead calm at the other sometimes. <laughs> in fact, you look at the little ribbons, look right now at the goalposts, they're blowing in opposite directions as we get set for the kickoff once again. O'Neill back deep to take this one, drifts right at the goal line, he'll bring it out. Huskies pinned him in the corner, but he broke through the crack and now has room to the outside. Lost the ball, and they'll have to fall on it to preserve the turnover. Still a scramble for the ball. Washington claims they have it. Let's see. Oh, my gosh. Big break. Oh, man. There's a case of not putting it away. It's Husky ball. O'Neill trying to turn a little extra magic and had it squirt free. Let's see who's got it when they unstack. You can see O'Neill trying to get to it. Daryl Daniels comes up with it, Todd, but right here, right here, he sees, he's thinking daylight. The ball's in his left hand, and he just over to his right hand, which is the right thing to do. The problem is he's just trying to churn so hard at the same time, it just popped out the back. But popped, and then it popped again, and Daniels had it go right into the bread basket and fell on it. Big break for Washington. They have it at the 23 to open the second half. Sheehy stepping up and adjusting. Little out route for Payton. Pick up a few. Sirwanga there on the coverage. Call it a gain of four on the play. Sirwanga's done a good job in coverage today against Payton. Again, not allowing him to get or pick up a big reception downfield. But the Husky game plan, as we knew it coming in, was going to be the short passes. A lot of times you think of the short passes, the quick post routes and spot patterns, and then they're doing a little spot patterns for five yards. Payton with just three catches in the first half. Sheehy breaks a tackle, and he'll score, standing up. Big hole off the left side for Rashawn. Boy, what a way to start the second half. A big, big fumble by Cal. UW recovers. And right there, it is blocking in speed. You look at the left side, Benji Olsen, 76, not even having to touch a man. They take them, their own selves out of the, the play. 98, Jerry Deloach on the, on the defensive line. Rashawn Sheehy, all speed. Well, the Huskies with touchdowns in the opening minute of the second and third quarters. Point after attempt by Lentz is good, and Washington able to capitalize. Great momentum right there. Huskies recover the fumble, punch it into the end zone. Sheehy with the rushing touchdown, his third of the year. Washington leads it 14 to three. 
outside of Memorial Stadium, or I guess more appropriately, the Husky Corner. But uh, they've had both touchdowns scored right in front of them, so they're overjoyed about that. It's 14-3 Washington, and a quick shot shows that, yes, O'Neal is still out there in kick return formation. I he checked that right away. Yeah, <laughs> he can't get on him too bad because he nearly broke it. Well, he, he was undecided about coming out. And then Washington gives him a break by kicking away from him this time. So Longo the return man, and another alley momentarily. He gets brought down. Good open field stop again by Gary Shavey, who's been a standout on special teams here a couple times. Well, we mentioned it in the first half. You see Tom Homo talking to Sirwanga. This was a team that hurts itself with some penalties and then turnovers as well. And that turnover was a real killer because Cal had an impressive opening first half. Well, the key thing, too, is that the Huskies actually capitalized on it and is able to get some points on the board. Better, just over 50% in the first half. You saw 106 passing. Bears rushed for 104. And they'll give it to Smith on first down. He made the most out of that play, broke it back to the outside. Towns, Parrish, and Burton all there for the Huskies. Husky defense was in position to make a big play on that one, thrown for a loss. Suki Wiggs looked like he just couldn't get his hands, enough hand on Tarek Smith. Smith has really just been waiting to break loose. He's averaging under four yards a carry, just not providing the Bears with the pop that they hoped for. Well, they've been rotating a lot of running backs in there, and just like everybody else, it takes time to get your rhythm. That's Joshua White in motion, empty backfield for the Bears. Surgeoner, the tight end, puts it away nicely, wrapped up by Jensen, and a first down at the 35-yard line. Again, a short pass play. It seems like the Huskies and the Bears are not really throwing anything downfield. Everything's going to be within five yards of the line of scrimmage. Yeah, we talked about our two deep threats, and Washington tried to find Payton on the long play into the end zone. But uh, outside of that, there really has not been the, the stretch. Narty and Shaw in the lineup this time. And a timeout called by California. So a couple of miscommunications uh, here for the Bears. They turn over the ball and use a timeout in the opening minutes of the third quarter. Husky fans celebrating in the sunshine in Strawberry Canyon with a 14-3 lead. A little movement up there. Yeah, Chorak signaling that uh, the Bears jumped. Let's see what Jim Springer has to say. One start. Offense, five yards, still first down. Fifth penalty against the Bears. And you see how better has mixed things up so far today, Sonny. And uh, that's really part of Doug Cosby's offensive strategy. Well, the old cowboy, and uh, he's done a good job with that offensive, his offensive coordinator. And obviously, we see a few passes that tied in. That's now the sixth penalty against the Bears. Better flushed out. And if that's not a dump away, I don't know what is. Yes, I know there was somebody in the pattern, but boy, he really just got rid of that. Smart play. Suki Wiggs with the pressure. And the Huskies arguing that that was a bailout. Well, it's hard to use this shuttle pass type of motion and, and throw it to an open area where there is no receiver. I mean, that, there is no way. That's not even an attempt to get the ball to a receiver. That's the new option Got away with the it, uh, California attack. <laughs> Tom Holmo uh, says, well, my quarterback survived. We avoided the sack. We avoided losing more yardage. So kudos to him. From the 30, now they'll try the shovel pass. That's just an incomplete pass. That's not a fumble. Everybody roars when that gets loose. Back to Iaea, they're uh, in pursuit for the Huskies. But it's really a pretty low risk play, Sonny, if the ball doesn't get completed. Oh, that's true. And, and uh, they had a big successful play in the first half with that. But, uh, you know, Vetter being a little crafty left hander, we saw this in the incompletion twice Are you in a row. Baseball again? <laughs> he's mixing up the junk ball in the heat, huh? Yeah, I think no, he threw okay. a little screwball on that one. <laughs> Brings up a third and 15 for the Bears. Before they can get that playoff, flags once again. Dead ball, no 
play, false start, offense. Five yards, still third down. They just continue to make life difficult for themselves. Well, Cal does have a new lineman in there, Todd. Uh, 78, Kirsten Sheridan, who isn't even on the depth chart that we have. He's in there right now for John Welburn at one of the tackle positions. And that may have been the second call against him. Yeah, Shields is the normal backup, but then they would have had to rearrange the entire line. So now they have to get it out to the 45-yard line. Look out on the back side, and he won't see it better goes down. Mel Miller all the way off the corner chased him down and hauled him down for the loss of yardage. <laughs> no doubt that, that's a cross-country job. <laughs> Mel is definitely on number 10. On the right side of the screen, as you called it, Todd, the cornerback blitz, and he was coming. They were bringing several people. I don't think too many quarterbacks are going to run outrun Mel Miller. Well, better lucky to hang on to the ball that time. You see the Husky defense a little quieter in the sack department so far today. Let's see what they do on special teams. 10 showing on the line for this punt attempt of Nick Harris. Remember, he ran it on a long, he certainly won't do it from back deep, and uh, he'll kick this one short. Nathan at the 43. Cracks one seam, and Washington with great field position again inside the Cal 40-yard line before he's dropped by Josh Trowbridge. I tell you, Cal's very lucky. Again, the punter took an awful long time to get rid of the football. It was nearly blocked. But Jerome Payton smelling a little, uh, I don't know, he like, likes to get into the end zone. <laughs> Can't <laughs> imagine like, why. He looked like Joe Jarzinka. You know, uh, we talked about him in the early in the season being fearless Joe Jarzinka, but that was fearless Jerome Payton. Interesting. Down in the huddle, Marcus Tuiasosopo had the hat on and was out part of the way on the field with the offense. And a little deliberation, and Heward will come back out again. Jim Lambright says he was planning on working Marcus into play during this game against Cal. Sheehy. Good block by Jarzinka coming from that halfback spot. she will take it down near the 30-yard line before Pete DiStefano runs him out of bounds. There's your fearless Joe play of the day. <laughs> uh, but unfortunately for the Huskies, it was eight yards downfield. Sheehy, nine carries for 35 yards in the first half. I thought on that play you saw Brandon Whiting. We haven't really called his name very much. The star of the defensive front for Cal. 48 one on one against Rashad Sheehy. Guess who won? Sheehy again brought down behind the line of scrimmage, it appears. Matt Beck in there for a big stop. Showed back a couple times in the first half, the sophomore from Grass Valley. Sheehy now over five yards of carry, even with that last one. And they'll spot it at the 29 once again. Connick the up man for Sheehy on this third and short. the ball carrier just bowls straight ahead put the head down it'll be close but I think the Bears have stacked him up short well, I tell Albert you, Dorsey leading the tacklers you like the bull straight ahead but one thing Pat Conniff did on that play is he kept his head down you know, right. I think if he'd had his head up just a little bit he would see a little bit of a break on the right side watch him get the football right here he just lowers his head bangs into somebody but you see there was a little crease Near Aaron Dale in 75, it may, it may have allowed him to pick up the first down. Almost anticipating the contact in advance, Jim Lambright watches. Payton coming off the field along with Coleman. Fourth and less than a yard. They need to get it inside the 27-yard line. You see the markers at the top of your screen, and they'll try to stretch the field out. Reggie Davis in the slot. Connor bowling straight ahead, kept the head up much better this time and picks up the first down. Damon Hewitt there to measure, mark, and tell the referees that it's a first down. Good little twist move by Pat Conniff to get his body turned, a little power. Yeah, Brock was there in a hurry, though, to uh, look right ahead. Watch at the end of the play. He goes up and keeps an eyeball on it. They're trying to rip the ball loose, aren't they? Oh, sure. That's yeah. Everybody does that nowadays. <laughs> They're still going to measure it despite Brock's uh, work for them. No 
question about it. Bruxas, I told you so. You know, the officials have the option to say, no, son, it is a first down. We don't need to take the time to measure. Yeah, somebody must have put up a complaint because that one was, was pretty obvious from the start, I thought. Coleman comes in along with Derzinka now on first down. Again, cracks through a scene, one man to beat. Nice open field tackle, but it'll be a first down for Washington inside the 15 as Sirwanga made the one-on-one -on -one stop, and there's a man down back towards the line of scrimmage. It looks like it's Benji Olsen. Yeah. Husky fans hope it's not that bad back that he had surgery on this last spring. Sonny, you talked in the first half a little bit about Rashawn reading and, and taking the ball where it's meant to be. He did a nice job again of finding this seam and cracking it upfield. Well, you see 76, Benji Olsen pulling around, leading up to the hole. He just got, got blindsided a little bit there. He really got belted by behind, on the, the back side, really, by Sinyika that time. Big boy, he looks like he's okay. He's jogging off on his own. Yeah, pretty good wheels for 6'4", 310 pounder. Looked like uh, Rashawn Sheehy hesitated just a little bit too much. And if he'd have broke to that far corner, it looked like he had a lot of room to run. Yeah, Sir Wonga played him pretty well, I thought, that time. They spotted officially at the 14. Now you can see the Husky rushing attack going a little bit better. 40 yards in this uh, second half after just 34 in the entire first half. Sheehy breaking it outside with a little shoulder move. Bounces a defender. Boy, he drove him straight back and gets all the way down to the five-yard line. Sirwanga and Gardner try to take him on. And just excellent in all phases of that run by Sheehy. Well, it's nice to see him bounce outside. You know, you, you break it up inside, you pound it inside, you pound it inside. Then you change your little blocking scheme. You wall him off on the end of the line of scrimmage, tight end block there. Allowing the ability of Rashan Sheehy, namely the speed, to get outside. Yeah, I just love that. The little shoulder move creates a crack, and then he just lowers the shoulder right into Sirwanga. Call it a gain of seven on that play for Rashan. He'll get it once again. Conniff with a big block on the corner for him, and Sheehy in the score. Nice lead block for Sheehy, and he's able to stroll in from seven. Running backs love that blocking up front, Todd. Great example on this play. Guys are pulling around. You got Brad Hutt up there. Pat Conniff, the big block on the corner up there on Smith number nine, letting Rashawn Sheehy get in the end zone. I'll tell you, that's a great job by a true freshman with a big block. Oops, whoops. Lentz missing the point after. Sheehy, five carries for 34 yards and two touchdowns in the opening six minutes of this third quarter. The Huskies lead Cal 20 to three. We'll return to Berkeley after this timeout. Welcome back to Berkeley. The fog creeps in. The Huskies roll on. Lentz set to drill it, and he takes this one deep over the head of O'Neal for the touchback. Lentz a little supercharged after missing that extra point, putting a little extra into that kick. Sheehy's second touchdown run of the third quarter. Sonny, have you noticed anything different so far here in the third quarter? Obviously, the turnover made it a little easier for Washington, but they're getting better at controlling the line of scrimmage. They're asserting themselves up front. That's uh, what we had talked about in the pregame. We didn't think it would be the second half. Here's some asserting up front by Smith on the first play. Finally dragged out of bounds by Tony Parrish. There's the Terry Smith that everybody in the Berkeley area wants to see. It's got to feel good for that young man to get out and turn on some speed and get downfield. Good look. Good blocking on Jason Chorak at the top there, allowing Tarek Smith to get outside and miss tackle. Those kind of things that coaches don't like to see when, you're, when your uh, defensive safeties come up and miss it. It's a swat on the helmet of approval. Didn't look like his hip was bothering him too much on that play. 
Rockford, the running backs coach, congratulating him. 32-yard gain on that one. Fields, the ball carrier. Farms and Smith lead Washington's tacklers. Suki Wiggs down there, Todd. Senior from O'Day, we've highlighted several times so far today. He's also able to go off under his own power. Looking down on the Washington sidelines, too, Marcus Tuiasa Sopo warming up, so we'll see if he comes in next series now for the Huskies as you get another look at Suki Wiggs taking a breather on the bench. Three yards on that carry for Fields. He'll get it once again off the left side. Good pursuit by Chris Campbell from the defensive end spot to haul him down. But Fields read that one, cracked it back inside nicely. Jensen also there for Washington. Big block by Kevin Swill of 75. Really did an excellent job over there. You'll see it on the right side. He kind of bounces outside. He's looking at number 40, Jerry Jensen. Gets him enough out of position to pick up another five yards. Cal's got something going here. They're kind of running the ball. Tarek Smith changing it off a little bit. Got to be frustrating for the staff. I mean, they really are moving the ball up and down. They're just not getting the points in the end zone. Looking deep this time for Surgeoner over the middle. That's the one we wanted on the throw. Ball loose. Is it down by contact or is it an incomplete pass? Wow. The side judge comes over and makes that call. Better trying to appeal down the field. That's the play that's been there throughout the day, and Surgeoner unable to get it. Lester Towns on the coverage. Better's arguing, why isn't the official, the back judge over there, making the call? This play's been open. We've seen it a couple of times, Todd. Boy, that's a great defensive play, and from here, I'd call it a catch and a strip. It looked like both feet had to touch the ground. Surgeoner fell on top of it. Bears don't get the call, and Smith is going to be dropped on second and long in the backfield. Mac Tuiaea, Jason Chorak on the stop. <laughs> Bear fans feel it's uh, the white, purple, plus the yeah. stripes against the blue and gold right now. Well, they woke him up a little bit in the second half. It's tough. The Huskies come out and score two quick ones. Kind of going a little doldrum, but that brought him back a little bit. Cal needs to get something going here if they want to be. Seven minutes to go in the third quarter. Again, that was the first time we really seen Vetter com come close to completing a pass long. And Surgeoner was covered tighter that time. Jensen on the pressure. O'Neill, the little dump off. Breaks a couple inside the 30. Wrapped up short of the first down. Lester Towns back to AIA there. But a good gainer for Cal on that long situation. And he almost lost the ball again, but he was able to recover it himself. Cal fans screaming for them to go for it as we watch again. Good play here. It looked like a little quick screen. Backer was coming. O'Neill able to, right there, he tried to switch the ball again to the other hand. Excellent play call by the Bears. Bears bring their short yardage group in. They need to get it inside the 26 yard line. It's fourth on a short two. Smith is the deep man. He'll get the call. Broke it outside nicely, but he'll never beat that pursuit. Washington swarms him under. Parrish leading the way along with Barnes, and the Husky defense comes up with a big play. They're going to boo Smith for breaking it outside, but every gap was filled in the line, Sonny. Yes, that's right. One guy coming off slowly. Nigel Burton is one of those guys that was disrupting the play at the line of scrimmage. Right side of the line. Everybody, Jason Chorax, you see Nigel Burton diving in from the rover. Smith had to bounce it outside, and Tony Parrish is not going to let him pick up the first. That is a great job by the defensive front. They just filled every spot. Parrish leading the tacklers. Getting a few guys banged up here, too, Todd. Suki Wiggs there on the, on the uh, bench, and then Nigel Burton limping off. Heward still in at quarterback, as the Huskies have it at the 30. Flag on the play of Connup goes up the middle. Andre Carter leads Cal's tacklers that time. I would guess one of the wide receivers jumped that time. 
look to be a massive confusion at the line of scrimmage. Repeat first down. The Cal Chorus line in action prior to that one. Sheehy, the ball carrier, will get three or four. Sonny, I don't remember the last time I've seen so much stunning and running around prior to the snap by so many people on a defensive front. Well, they've been obviously doing it the whole ball game, trying to disrupt the blocking schemes of the Huskies, but that time it looked like there was a little bit of confusion amongst themselves. Yeah, the guys were working those karaoke steps that you do in preseason <laughs> drills. They were doing so many crossovers. Carter, Rhodes, and Smith on the tackle for California. It's all Cleland's fault. See, he flips and they all go crazy. So blame him. <laughs> Second and a long 11. Looking a little quick out now, one on one for Payton. Tried to crack it back inside, but the Bears had somebody squatted there as well as Burnside was inside on the slot, and Andre Rhodes helped wrap him up. Seen the same pass play many times this afternoon. Jerome just going out four or five yards, spotting up. Brock quick out. Trying to let Jerome Payton break it himself, but the good coverage over there by the Bears. Sawanga also there on the coverage. He's done a pretty good job and has been locked up with Jerome most of the day. Well, he actually had him beat a few times in the first half, but Brock underthrew the ball. Could have been some big gainers. Huskies need to get it to the 41-yard line. Cleveland wide open, a little underthrown. He adjusts nicely and makes the catch. There again, a bit underdone. Marquis Smith on the coverage. Cam Cleland was thinking goal line if Brock drops that one in nicely, but a good comeback to rally and come back to the ball. It was an excellent route by Cam Cleland going down the seam, right down the middle of the field on the other hash mark. But I agree with you, lay it up there a little quicker and out, and uh, he'd have, have an opportunity to go to the goal line. They'll spot it at the Cal 43 yard line. Cleveland getting a little bit of maintenance. 43 yard touchdown catch among those totals. Sheehy ball gets right through a couple of guys. He had no business getting positive yardage on that play, Sonny, and juke them both. Oh, uh, there's no way. You got 92. James Gibson, defensive lineman for Cal, thought he had him. It's like trying to tackle a ghost. Rashawn just blew out of his hands. There he is, number 92. Thought he had his first tackle for loss of the year. Maluka Tabeno on the tackle for Cal. 11 carries, 103 yards now for Sheehy. 68 of those here in the third quarter with still more than four minutes to play. There you see his numbers in the quarter. He'll just set up another spot. Called down from behind by Matt Beck. Good pursuit by the inside backer for Cal. Or Rashawn might have had a first down and a lot more on that play. You like to set up those holes, didn't they? Yes, they are. It's uh, the offensive line appears to be wearing down the Cal defense. But Rashawn Sheehy's hit that hole so quick. You know, it's uh, watch this play. Tony Coates, excellent blocking up there. Brad Hutt, good job right there. It's nice to pick up eight, eight yards on first down. Maurice Shaw comes in for Sheehy now on second and three. Garzinka in the slot. And Austin in for the first time we've seen him today down at the bottom of your screen. Trying to find Payton one on one. Now he'll break it off and adjust. Didn't quite get to the ball, and Sirwanga had a pretty good hand on him as well. You see the reaction there, Sonny, of Brock Hewitt. He was trying to tell Jerome, you know, readjust, and there's just a little misread as the two of them tried to improvise. Well, it looked to me like Brock was doing a little pump fake that it was going to be. They've been setting up with that spot pass, spot pass, spot pass. A little pump fake, go deep. <laughs> One of them wasn't on the same page. And then he got a little pressure and he rolled out here. Tough throw. Yeah. <laughs> you can see him talking to Jerome. Well, it looked like Jerome was coming back and then broke it long against Suwanga, but uh, they'll, they'll resolve that one quickly. Third and three. Shaw the motion man. And Cal's going to stop this one short. <laughs> Sanyika and Gibson lead the tackles on Conniff. It's 
That's a lot of, I'm sorry, Todd. I was going to say that's a lot of yardage, really consistently trying to make right there with a big pile of humanity inside the guards. We'd like to see him maybe go off tackle a little bit. Reggie Davis comes into the Washington lineup again along with Andy Carroll, but the Huskies are going to use a timeout first on this fourth and about two to go. 2.33 to play in the third quarter. Jim Lambright, see what he can come up with out of the playbook on this fourth down situation. You've seen them at Seafair, and now they're over the Bay Area, the Blue Angels, part of the Fleet Week celebrations here in San Francisco. They're the only thing that's flying higher than the Husky attack right now. <laughs> As Washington faces a fourth and two, need to get it right to the Cal 22-yard line here in the closing minutes of this third quarter that's been all Washington thus far. Shaw, the man in the backfield. Coleman in motion. Huerta, a little run around the corner, will pick up first down yardage and nearly broke it toward the end zone. David Burnside hauling him down. Nice call. It wasn't quite a naked bootleg, but uh, again, rocked off from the man who's left unmarked in a defensive scheme, right? That's absolutely right. And the other thing is the coaches have enough confidence in Brock and feel that he's got enough athletic ability to actually turn the corner and pick up the first down. It's nice to have an option where if the throw is not there, you, you have a little space to at least pick up four or five yards and a little bit more. Just inside the 16 yard line and another first down, Sheehy back in the lineup. Little motion before there, Sheehy stutter steps, gets short yardage that time. Seiko Senyika on the stop for California. Had some help from Albert Dorsey once again. Might have been the busiest guy on the Cal defense that we've seen so far today, along with Sanyika. Sanyika did a good job against Conniff that time. Conniff trying to get the block on him. Taught the young man a little lesson on that play. Boy, it'd be interesting too, Sonny, to see time of possession for this quarter. You get the feeling that even though Cal had the one long drive, Washington's really held onto the ball, and they've closed the total offense difference to just nine yards now with an outstanding third quarter. Tenth play of this drive, looking slanting for Payton, makes the adjustment and had it squirt free. Oh, that was just behind him, or he would have strolled into the end zone. He had a step and a half on Sirwanga. Brock is just off a little bit on some of his throws today, and that one, you know he'd like to have this back. I know we hear people say that all the time, but right there, wide open, a lot of space. If we get a chance to look at that one again, Sonny, I think Brock's still throwing off that front foot a little bit. We talked about it in the first half. We'll have to watch him favor that left foot a little bit, I think. Yeah, he picks it up. See the way he picked it up and delivered the football? It just takes that much more momentum out of, out of the zip you want on the passes. Third and nine now for the Huskies. Looking for Cleland, nearly picked, and then went through his hands. Albert Dorsey screened off Cameron Cleland. Both guys agonized a little bit, but that would have been a tough one for Cam to make with that defensive pressure, and Dorsey was right in front of him. At least he's looking for the tight end today. See him breaking down the seam there, coming back to the middle. Tough throw, should have been intercepted. It wasn't, and Cam almost came up with a tremendous catch. Lentz will be on to attempt the field goal. He's 0 for 1. This one would be a 32-yarder. Much closer in. Sequoia the holder. Bears, were they off? No, yes, the flag does come up. We'll see whether Jim Lambright will take the points off the board or not. Let's see. Nope, he'll decline it and keep the points. Jim Springer singles, signals rather, and says, guys, get off the field. Your coach has already turned it down. So Nick Lentz gets his first field goal in his Husky kicking career and pushes the margin out to 20. All Washington in this third quarter. Continuing to roll here in the third quarter. Philip Pipersburg back deep for Cal along with O'Neill. O'Neill trying to find a spot once again, and he'll take it out close to the 30-yard line before he is dropped. Jason Harris on the stop for Washington as you get to see the Blue Angels 
This is our added bonus coverage as we go to our <laughs> game summary. I like the bottom one especially there, Sonny. Washington's done a good job bottling up Bobby, Bobby Shaw in this ball game. Not giving him a lot of room to operate, and uh, Vetter, of course, has not really aired it out downfield, which tells you that the Huskies are not letting him get open downfield. Short yardage, yeah, but nothing deep. Huskies starting to close the gap. You saw them up to 265. That would give them 119 yards of total offense in this quarter, as opposed to the 146 they had the entire first half. Surgeoner on the reception actually gets driven past the markers. He'll pick up the first down because of the momentum of the tackle. And now a late flag thrown in after the stop. Miller there on the tackle, along with Barnes, I believe, and Jermaine Smith was also there. After the play, dead ball. Personal foul, defense, 15 yards, automatic first down. Let's take a look why, Sonny. Well, 25, Mel Miller out there to make the tackle on Surgeoner. Well, yeah, I, I don't think that one's particularly legal, but. Yeah, that's something you don't need to do. <laughs> you don't want to give the, the team a, an advantage with a play like that. Takes it all the way to the Washington 44 yard line. Gives Cal a little bit of life. Smith had to cut back, staring right at big 4 6 in the place where he wanted to go. And Jason Chorak there to bring him down. A little more than a yard on that game. You know, I'm, the defenses from both teams are playing really tough so far today. It's like, you know, you, Coming in with all the big reception yardage, uh, 400 yards over that in total offensive game. Today, what, third quarter, they're still under 300 yards apiece. I think we've been impressed by both defensive units really in this ball game, although the Huskies have started to break things open here in the third quarter. Better with a lot of time looking for Narti, gets bumped. Did his feet come down or not? No. Got driven out of bounds. You can hear the reaction of the Cal fans as Tony Parrish was there on the coverage. Well, I tell you, Tony Parrish carried a, covered a lot of ground on this play. You could see it set up. I could tell where the quarterback was going to go. Tom Homo arguing the call. Of course, he's closer than we are. Takes his young man out of the places. Look, I'll handle this. Good throw by Vetter right here, but. Parish in position, you'll see that only, well, actually, no feet. Yeah. <laughs> One, two, three. Well, we don't have time for broadcast jinx, but uh, that's because we've come to the end of the third quarter. Narcy's appeal turned down. It's right now in Berkeley as we get set for the fourth quarter of action. The Bears trailing the Huskies by 20 after Washington. Put two touchdowns and a field goal on the board in the third quarter. We welcome you back to Memorial Stadium. I'm Todd Pickett along with Sonny Six Killer. There's been the most active group, <laughs> I think, at times today, and the Husky band was plenty busy in the third quarter. Bears faced with a third and long to open up this fourth quarter from the Washington 42. Better had that one batted loose. Jerry Jensen over on the coverage. That one intended for Damian Douglas, who's been relatively quiet today. Sonny, it seemed like a play that just kind of ran out of room. Vetter was uh, forced into that boundary and ran out of options. Good pursuit. Look downfield. Everybody's covered. There's an open man. But by the time, it, it's so hard when you're running. You see a guy break open, and you're going to the same side. you got to get your feet in the right position to deliver the football. Give Jensen a lot of credit there, Sonny. He went down and came back to recover and get a hand on that pass. A lot of guys would have just written off the play. <laughs> Harris set to punt. Hathen back deep. This is a situation where I expect a run, you know, instead of that one we had in the first half. But now down three TDs. Huskies dropping some guys off the line. They run up. The man has the ball. The Huskies drop it. They got it. They read it perfectly. They tried to run a little fumble Ruski to the up man, and Washington wouldn't buy it whatsoever. Josh Trowbridge was the up man, and Washington will take over. <laughs> Good read by the Husky defensive front. Looks like Jabari Issa's all, Issa is all pumped up. Right there in the middle. See the handoff right there. Looks like three Huskies picked it up. Yeah, no, nobody bit at all. They, they tried a little bit of everything on that one. And uh, 
Tom Homo's trick bag comes up empty once again as Washington takes over 46 yard line Bears ran that early in the year against uh, Oklahoma as well. Good recollection there by our statistician Ryan Church bringing that up for us. Oh, he woke up, huh? All right. And Tui Asasopo's out on the field. See, uh, Ryan didn't point that out, so we have to give him a, a ding back the other way. She, the ball carrier, <laughs> takes it over midfield. John McLaughlin on the tackle for California. Hope to give Marcus Tui Asasopo some plays to have some fun with and showcase some of his skills. You know what I think is good about this too, Sonny? They didn't rush him into the ball game. They originally talked about playing him in the first half, and obviously the game was tight. Good field position right here. Three touchdown margin, 20 points. Great spot to put him in and get him the experience. And on the far side, you got another burner, Jawarn Hooker, number four, the freshman receiver. Still looking for his first catch of the season. Coleman is out there along with Payton with him. Sheehy slipped and fell down in the backfield. They'll spot it at the 49-yard line. And Rashawn's staying down momentarily. Well, that's good. He's back up. Looked like his feet just went out from underneath and Marquis Smith, the closest Cal defender. Yeah, Smith came up and gave him a good pop as he was floundering around down there. See him slip down as he attempts to break it back right there where the big hole is. <laughs> it's too bad he lost his footing. Let's give him a little shot there in the gut. Well, they spot it right at midfield to get a little generous for him. And it'll be third and six. Need to get it right to the Cal 44. Jarzinka in, slotted right there in the corner of your screen. Little screen attempt for Sheehy. Flag thrown on the play as he had to step around his own blockers. He'll be dropped about a yard and a half short of the first down. San Yika on the stop for California and I think Sonny we're going to bring that one back or at least it's a penalty against Washington Pete DiStefano also in on the stop for California. Said he could make the call there. See what Tom Homo elects to do the flag was thrown at the 46 so it would take it all the way back to the 36 yard line. Offense. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Repeat third down. Tui Asasopo going over to the sidelines to get the play call. They'll spot it at the 36 yard line, so it'll be a third and 20, make it 21 for Washington. Payson in motion. Flushed out is Tui Asasopo. Still looking, he'll just take it out of bounds. Chased all the way along the backside, that time by Brandon Whiting. Good job by Marcus, good decision. Nobody was open downfield. Good coverage by the Bears on that play. Sonny looked as though the Bears kind of rolled everybody up tight to the line of scrimmage right before that snap, too. They had everybody covered, Todd, on that play. They had, I, even the Bears know that Jawarn Hooker is his feet are on the far side. They had two guys on him. O'Loughlin on to punt. Shaw back in punt return formation this time. O'Loughlin averaging 40 yards a kick today. He doesn't get off a great one there, and the roll won't favor Washington either. Down uh, at the 36 yard line by Tere Butler, and California will get set to take over there, trailing by 20 points. Smith carrying the ball as we go back to action. Wrapped up after a short gain. Marcus Hairston on the stop for Washington. Again, he was a little doubtful today. He's had pretty good playing time and has been real active in this contest. Oh, he's made some big plays today. Good to see him back on the field. Healthy, got a little brace down there to make sure he doesn't further injure what he a little tweak in his knee. Gain of about a half yard on that play for Smith. California is going to have to try to come up with something here as the clock continues to wind. Huskies bring in some pressure. They pick up Jensen, do the Bears, and Better throws that one away. Had Smith streaking down the sideline. Jim Lambright out appealing this time because there wasn't a receiver anywhere in the neighborhood. There is a flag down.
Vetter will appeal it, but he, he's really lucky. I mean, he's, <laughs> he's, he's one for three in possible potential grounding calls today, I think. <laughs> Yeah, he's uh, he should just take this one and say yeah, you're right, but uh, Right here clearly nobody was open a lot of pressure. I don't blame him for wanting to get rid of the football, but Hard to say you're throwing to someone take here. a look at Shaw on this play now inside man Of course betters rolled away from him, but uh, you can see a Little frustration for Bobby Shaw as well Washington's kept him out of the attack and Wanted at that time. Well, being a left hander, you think he'd make the read on that side of the field where Bobby Shaw was, but he must have seen something that made him change his mind and have to come to the near side. And what are the first two words Bobby Shaw had to say in the huddle? <laughs> I'm open. Off play action this time, looking for Douglas, batted, nearly intercepted. Nice play by Jermaine Smith. Boy, he played that one nicely. A little bit of hands on the back, but he's not called for that. Then broke and nearly had the pick. Well, that's a long pass. Long time in the air. Good job by the Husky defensive. Neither one of the wide receivers has been sparkling today in terms of the numbers. Shaw over 17 a reception this season, and Hathen over 27 a reception. And uh, eight catches combined between the two of them. Jarzinka back deep. There's a look again at Bobby Shaw. Nick Harris on to punt. Jarzinka drifting back inside the 30, juggled for a moment. Then he gets dropped at about the 40 yard line. Brought down by Chris Easley for California. Washington will have the ball out near midfield once again. The Huskies have controlled the second half of play. They lead California by 20. This is Fox Sports Northwest. Brock Hewitt back in at quarterback for Washington. Flag thrown on this play on the far side of the field. Conniff carrying Sanyika making the stop. Kind of a late flag that time, Todd, but they were looking at the tight end, Cam Cleveland, on the play. Might have been the shift situation once again. Let's see what Jim Springer has. Illegal shift. Team was not set. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. Every once in a while you get lucky. Well, the Huskies do a lot of shifting. They put a lot of people in motion. And tell you. They'll take it back to the 35-yard line. Sonny, I know you've been in this spot before you watch Brock and you just get a sense of that little bit of frustration that a quarterback has. It's tough to shake off when, when you know things could be going a little bit better. He's just been off just a little bit on some of those throws, Todd. I'm sure he's been probably disappointed at this point in that. Sheehy picking his way along the right side. Jacob Wasdorf on the stop for California. Pete DiStefano coming up from the free safety spot to assist. That's got to be hard, though, Sonny, to go back to that when you know that you've been that close and you know that it's your balls when you've had guys open. You've got to shake that off and, and uh, get those passes in. Yeah, they haven't really been tremendously sharp today. And, and uh, for one, one reason or another, ideal playing conditions down there today. Huskies are trying to right now with 10 and a half minutes to go to Get some good yardage, but let that clock run. Get down on some time. Bears showing some pressure along the front. Sheehy picking up the blitzer. Payton one on one blows by Sirwanga. Couldn't make the catch. Good coverage again by Sirwanga, and he got there in the nick of time. Excellent job, Sirwanga, putting that left hand up to knock it down. Good coverage, running step for step with Jerome Payton, which you don't see a lot of people do in this league. You know, the Huskies have benefited from Nigel Burton transferring per, from the defunct Pacific program. Sirwanga came from that program as well, and he's been a sparkler in the Cal backfield today. Excellent job. He done, never looked back. His right hand on Jerome Payton's back, getting away with it a little bit there, but good job. Jerome out in a single set to the bottom now, and again, Sirwanga matched with him. Huskies need to get it to midfield. Heward with uh, plenty of time. Payton open over the middle, first down, and he'll be wrapped up there. Marquise Smith on the tackle. Freddie Coleman clearing the whole area out for him. Big area to throw the football. Jerome just settling down, finding the right spot, and Brock just delivering on, on the money. 
You'll see 22 Freddie Coleman coming through the screen here clearing everything out everybody running with him and Brock actually looking deep and then coming back underneath with his eyeballs and finding the right guy. 19 on the play they'll spot it at the count 45 yard line. He were just over 50 percent. Sheehy broke and play a little bit as we come back live. He was trying to take it to the right side and it was nothing but blue and gold. So he spun around and got good yardage out of the place. Sirwanga on the tackle. Late flags thrown back in the uh, backfield as a couple of players were mixing it up. California's John McLaughlin was back there along with Brad Hutt for Washington. And they were well off the ball. What is a little bit of a you take up for your teammates and that's what happened there Owen Cruz coming back defending his offensive lineman. They're kind of a close group as you know Todd they like to hang out together and on that play McLaughlin really gave a cheap shot to one of the Husky, Husky linemen and now Owen Cruz came back. Yeah Chris easily came from the sidelines. First of all offense 15 yards. Second They'll down. call it against Washington. They bring uh, easily off the sidelines and you saw him haul McLaughlin off. So it's a dead ball situation. So they'll spot it as the down first and then mark the penalty off as Tom Homo continues to talk to John McLaughlin, young man the Bears originally recruited who went to Notre Dame and then transferred back out to Cal. Jim Lambright waiting for an interpretation on this one as the officials will tell him what happened. We'll step aside for a second. Exactly 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter. Washington leads Cal by 20. Welcome back to Seattle second and 18 for Washington as we return to action. Looked like a little jump that time Sheehy cracking it back inside. Matt Beck on the stop for Cal. David Burnside coming up to assist on the tackle. Well there's a sign the Huskies are trying to burn the clock Todd with third and a long ways to go just a simple off guard running play our second down bringing up a third and 17 not as aggressive play call <laughs> as you'd like to see three wide outs this time Coleman Jarzinka to the bottom of your screen Payson to the top they need to get inside the Cal 35 yard line flag thrown on the play Jarzinka underneath ball incomplete Procedure against the Huskies. The Bears will likely turn this down. Chidi Uomo was on the coverage for Cal on that play. Illegal formation, six man on the line. Offense, penalty is declined. Fourth down. <laughs> so that'll bring Sean O'Loughlin and the punt team back out once again. Now, this is an opportunity for O'Loughlin to get off a good punt. Last time, 27 yards. Give Cal pretty good field position, Todd, up there around the 40. O'Neill back in single coverage. Bears with 10 on the line, but set up for the return. They're covering the wideouts. They bring one up the middle and just about got it. O'Loughlin gets it away. And O'Neill thought about it, then ran away from the ball, and it'll go inside the 10 yard line. Statistically, it'll look like a beauty. Nobody will ever know how much O'Loughlin flirted with danger on that kick. The Bears bottled up. Trailing by 20 points when we return to Berkeley. Back in Berkeley, Washington leading it by 20, and Cal will have to put together a big drive now just to get some of the deficit whittled off the board. First pass intended for O'Neill is incomplete. Miller there in the neighborhood. Pretty good throw. He just took his eyes off the ball, wanted to turn around and run with the football too soon. This is time for the Husky defense to step it up a little bit. Uh, they haven't really they've only had one sack on better this afternoon. But you see how well they've contained Cal's offensive attack in the second half. Done an excellent job. Be interesting to talk to Jim Lambright and the staff after this game. You just get the feeling that those halftime defensive adjustments have been one of the keys to success here in the second half for Washington. 
Marcus Fields the ball carrier. And of course, having your opponent hand you the ball on the opening kickoff doesn't hurt things any either. It's a great way to start the second half. Javari Issa, Mel Miller on the tackle for the Huskies. And the Bears will be faced with another third and long situation in a place where you don't really like to try to open it up much. What they've done also in the second half, they haven't allowed Vetter to utilize his scrambling ability, which keep, picked up some key first downs. Quick slant to Shaw, breaks one tackle, first down. Dragged down on the arm grab by Tony Parrish. Lester Towns coming up to assist. And we see some of the individual ability of Bobby Shaw after he breaks the initial attempt of Ture Butler. He is so smooth, you can just tell on this route. He's, he's smooth, comes off the line of scrimmage real well, but he gets his hands up. Pretty good pass here, too, by Vetter, but right there, you love those wide receivers that catch with their hands. And he's a big guy, too, so he can shug him off a little bit and pick up some extra yardage. All the way out to the 32 yard line. Big hole for Fields as he'll get close to first down yardage again. Nigel Burton got a hand on him. Jerry Jensen was there to help wrap it up. Fields limping a little bit after that shot from Burton. That was a quick opener. Quick hitter up the middle. Good blocking up front. Newberry 62. Good block right there. John Romero really with a big block. First down for the Bears at their own 43. The middle of the line's been their most successful area today, as you said earlier, Sonny. That looks like a little uh, mistake as Vetter runs around the left side for about a one-yard gain. Jermaine Smith wrapping him up. Fields going over to his quarterback. W was I supposed to have that? <laughs> well, you know, on the other side, Todd, right now, Cal, with seven minutes and change to go in this game, really haven't put it downfield. You know, we've, I know we've talked about it a lot today, but it, it just seems like they're, they're just kind of, you know, ho hum and yeah. along. And, and yet they have over 300 yards of total offense and has been the case of so many of these games. They right now are out gaining Washington total offense, but trailing on the board. Better flushed out and dropped. What a great one-handed <laughs> stop by Mac Tuiaia. Stick out the big paw and just grab some. That was great. That takes some strength, though. Yeah, it does. Look at Big Mac right there going against John Romero. Battling right there. Quarterback has to make a decision. Do I step further up in the pocket? Do I try and go outside? And took himself right out to where Mac could get a big hand on him. Mac to Iaia. Nice tackle for loss for Mac and makes it a third and long distance situation again for California. He'll open the backfield now. White the motion man with trips left, trying to find O'Neill underneath. Now he catches it. There's a flag thrown, and I think the Huskies going to be called for holding as O'Neill was held up trying to run that pattern, son. Yeah, it looked like Chris Campbell, 35, saw the play coming, turned around and just tried to hold him up a little bit. Normally what you should do is just give him a big headbutt and then uh, not grab anything. Boy, I hate to see that on third and 17. Yeah, there have not been many of these types of penalties for Washington today that have uh, benefited Cal. Penalty, 10 yards from the previous spot, still third down. There's a break. So they get 10 out of it, but rather than profiting even further, it's still a third down situation and about seven yards to go as they'll spot it up at the 46 yard line. Shaw in the split position to the bottom of your screen here. Looking for the tight end surgeon or he turned nicely on Towns. Put him on his hip. He says he has the catch. The Huskies say he does not. Surgeoner wins the debate. Well, earlier on, it looked like he had a catch and they didn't give it to him. We'll see on the replay if he hangs on long enough or before he hits the ground. Tough to tell from that angle. We well, did a great job of pinning Towns and then making the turn to create a little bit of space. 
O'Neal, the motion man on first down for Cal. Vetter looking down the middle for Surgeoner and overthrew him. Double coverage that time from Towns and Jermaine Smith. Well, they're getting the coverage where the middle linebacker, Marcus, excuse me, Lester Towns, has to run with uh, uh, Surgeoner. But I'll tell you what, Surgeoner is looking for the ball in every play. You have to give Towns some credit. With his size being able to keep up with Surgeoner, <laughs> who's shown pretty good wheels. Of course, they're, they're about head to head. Towns at 6'3, 240, and Surgeoner listed at 6'4, 200. So I guess it's a dead heat between those two horses. <laughs> From the 43. Better again buying some time. Shaw adjusts the pattern. But it's going to be picked off. That floater grabbed by Tony Parrish. Has some room. Huskies have another man down deep near the goal line as Parrish takes it out over the 45-yard line. Surgeoner makes the tackle, and the other uh, man back deep has picked himself off the turf and is fine. That's Mel Miller. That was just a bad pass by Vetter right there. You know, nobody was open. He was hoping for a little prayer. Let my man Bobby Shaw come up with a big play. Tony Parrish wasn't about to let it happen. It was really a nice gift for Tony Parrish. Good pick right there. And nice run back, too. That's the third or fourth, rather, interception now of the season for Washington. First one for Parrish. A senior from Huntington Beach, California, takes it all the way out to the 47-yard line. It's Shaw, the ball carrier, and Beck on the tackle for California. Long afternoon, Tom Homo there consoling his quarterback a little bit as Vetter talks things over with the coach. It, you know, you get the feeling we talked about it. it's not been so much bend but not break defensively for Washington as it has been spurt and then stutter. <laughs> That's true for, for, the, for the Cal offense. Yeah, if it's not a penalty, it's coming up with a poor play call or not executing properly to come up with the big completion. Washington may be just real content to run two or three line plunges in a row here. Shaw over midfield. Some of the fans starting to file out of Memorial Stadium here. Jeremiah Parker on the tackle for California. Well, this Washington defense has turned in an impressive performance. Allowing just three points to California, and the Bears really had the only uh, other strikes were the two missed field goals early. You are dumping that one over the middle for Reggie Davis, and a first down for Washington before Marquis Smith finally hauls him down. Reggie Davis comes in at the H-back position, Todd, and he's really a nice physical specimen. He has a lot of natural ability. Coaches like to see him on this side of the line. Brock, of course, likes to dump it off, and a uh, nice big play. As we head down in our closing minutes here in the fourth quarter, you can see Heward with uh, just a shade better performance than Justin Better. Brock getting the one touchdown on the 43-yarder to Cleveland. Better, who's uh, led a high strike Cal offense, is pretty well shut out so far today. Shaw carrying once again Andre Carter on the tackle. Big freshman Andre Carter. Carter coming off the field now. There's a guy you're going to have to watch when he grows into that body. <laughs> yeah, another one of those. Inside three minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. Coleman, the motion man, and they'll give it to Shaw once again. Down past the 25-yard line before he's pulled down. Well, Reggie Davis having a better day today as he's hauled a, a couple of catches in had only one coming in Cal with a man down on the turf right now Chris easily nope let's check that for a minute there's two down there's a husky Chad Ward also sitting down there with him 
We'll step aside for a minute while they look at the players. 2.33 left in the ball game. Washington leads it 23-3. And we welcome you back to Berkeley. Gibson was the man shaken up for California on that play. Heward looking towards the end zone. Flags thrown as Coleman was locked up that time with Derek Gardner. Well, I think Gardner's going to get a little penalty here, Todd. A lot of fans down here. Oh, I don't blame them. They've enjoyed great weather and great trip to have. It's a huge block of purple in the south end zone here at Memorial Stadium. And uh, another couple minutes, and they're going to be the majority of the crowd here as it's really started to thin out. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Well, that'll buy some more time now for Washington. A little more than two minutes to go. and. Uh, the Huskies have it down inside the red zone once again. I think it's a fair statement, Sonny, to say this is a little bit lower score than we anticipated from these two teams coming into today. Well, averaging so many over 30 points a game, nearly 30 for the Huskies and over 30 for the Cal. Shaw. Bouncing off a couple of tacklers. David Burnside was the first man to hit him, and then Andre Carter helped wrap him up. Marquise Smith also there. Shows you how well the defenses have played, and also a little bit of the offense being uh, not able to capitalize on some big plays early. Coaches kind of went away from that for both sides and yep. started going to the short game a little bit. And I think we've seen an indication, too, of the potential this California team has if they can get their execution on track. They, they started a lot of young guys on defense, and uh, next year, uh, are, I'm sure game by game, they're getting stronger and stronger. Well, they had high hopes, too, after that 2-0 start and then had things slow down a little bit. The last second loss last week to Louisiana Tech, looking for Coleman in the end zone. Did he get the feet down? Yes, the hands are up. Now, Cal's going to argue this one that they carried him out of bounds, but Coleman gets credit for the touchdown. Derek Gardner thought he had the coverage, and you can see his reaction. The end of a frustrating afternoon for California. Just a little quick step fade route to the corner. Freddie Coleman's going to go up and get it right there. He's got it. He dragged a foot down too. Yep. Give him credit. Gardner's trying to claim he made the steal. But once that foot's down, that's done. It's over. Moot yeah. point right there. Fourth touchdown catch of the year. And a fine play by the senior from Tyler, Texas. He doesn't realize you can't intercept when you're out of bounds. You can't intercept oh, once a man's gotten his foot down. That's it. Plays no. over. Well, right. ball's caught. He doesn't even need to get it down. So Coleman will probably wrap up the scoring for the Huskies, who have shut Cal out here in the second half. All Washington, 30-3 to with 84 seconds to go. Nick Lentz set to kick off for the Huskies one last time. The Transamerica Pyramid across the bay. They've needed those hats today in the Bay Area sun. O'Neill one last time from the six yard line. Out beyond the 30 before he's dropped. Daryl Daniels along with Jeremy Brigham on the stop for Washington. Well, we've got a quick second. I want to thank our crew in the booth here today. Charlton Curry, our spotter. Ryan Church, our stats guys, who've been uh, big help to us today, along with Kevin Chang, our relief driver for Ryan, his chauffeur, personal assistant. <laughs> uh, we appreciate Ryan making the drive all the way down from Seattle and helping us out today. It's been a super group to work with here. Our entire crew has made this a real breeze for us today, and we appreciate it. Vera catching this one on first down, breaking a couple tackles, and takes it to the Washington 44 before he's wrapped up by Perry. They ran that play perfectly today. And that'll put the Bears back out on top in the total offense column. You see how Washington has outscored California and dominated this, although in many of those games, the Bears have had the statistical edge. That by an average of 24 
Uh, a little low, making 20 points a game, rather, over those 12 meetings. Vera catching it again, Chorak the tackle. Good job by Jason to keep him in bounds, keep that clock running. Yardage can mean a lot of things, Titus, but if it's between the 20s and the 30s, it doesn't mean much. Yeah, and outside of range of your kicker, too. Shaw one on one. Short yardage again, and then hauled out of bounds by Jermaine Smith. A little bit of frustration from the Cal wide receivers. Good job by the officials there to keep them separated as Damian Douglas thought he'd come over and throw his two cents worth in, too. <laughs> this stage of the game, you do that. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, you're going to beat us, but I'm going to get something out of this. <laughs> Huskies on the road against Arizona next week. Don't forget, you can see that game next Sunday night here on Fox Sports Northwest. Cal doesn't get a whole lot easier for the Bears next week as they take on the Washington State Cougars up in Pullman. Douglas, the intended receiver, Smith and Burton there on the coverage. That, ought to, that has all the uh, makings of an offensive shootout next week up in the Palouse. It sure does. Anytime you go over there, it has the makings of an offensive shootout. We thought we were going to have a shootout today. We did. <laughs> and, and now that you know, give this Husky defensive unit some credit. They'll play for a little pride. They want to keep the opponents out of the end zone. Better trying to find beer at that time. Popped it behind him. Nice to see Jabari Issa, the defensive lineman, number 95, dropping off in coverage that time. A little stunt on that one then, Sonny. Oh. That's really been a new thing over, it, folks don't understand that perhaps, but the, the dropping off the different zone blitzes and coverages over the last two, three years and how much that's changed. It's given the Huskies a couple interceptions the last couple years. Mac Tuiaea last year, coming up with a big one. Down in Oregon. A third and ten situation now for the Bears. Better will get dropped. Nope, he got three from both men. Now under pressure again and dragged down. <laughs> Boy. I mean, first he gets away from Chorak and Tuiaea, and then it's uh, Campbell and Towns who wrap him up. I mean, that, that's like being on the ocean in a storm. You duck the first <laughs> wave and another bigger one Whoosh. comes after you. Bears are going to have to hurry if they want to get anything off, and they're not going to. We're going to run out of time before they can get the snap. There's the ball game. Now they'll give them credit for it. Nope. Nope, they won't. All right. It took a second. That's the proper call because the clock had expired, and the Bears had no way of stopping it anyway. It was fourth down, and that's it. So Tom Holmo unable to break the Bears' losing streak against the Huskies. He'll congratulate Jim Lambright. It's 15 in a row for Washington and they stay undefeated in Pac-10 play while dropping California to 0-2 in the conference. Huskies 30, Bears 3, we'll return to Berkeley after this timeout.